But what I want to know is, is the CJ show on Spotify? Or on Google? I, I refuse to read anybody else's Where are we at on this. Google? <laughs> Jesse, where are you going? Oh, he's walking away. Walking away because he can't handle the heat. What? And he's adjusting the camera, which he should have done before the show. Yeah. Just like how he should have got the podcast on Spotify and Google. Yeah. Why have you personally wronged me, Jesse Blake? I don't want to download the Apple app. Why are you I wronging everyone? Bullshit. Okay, That's okay. why I bought this Android phone. Okay, okay. Sorry. <laughs> so anyway. Um, uh, Should I go into what happened? Please. Like, do we yeah, want the actual Is details? it necessary? You only got one or two tweets. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> We have a Discord server, and half of the comments on the entire server are, hey, when is the CJ show coming up to Spotify? There's there's like, almost, we're going to hit 6,000 people, and I swear 3,000 of those people all commented ex at the exact same time, hey, when is CJ going to be on Spotify? Well, it's not on Spotify, because we, we were setting up the uh, RSS feed last week before the show. Right. And we, and we sent it off to all the different outlets. We put it up on Google, on Apple, on Spotify. And Spotify took the show down because they were like, hey, this has no content. This isn't a podcast. You can't put this up. And we're like, damn it. So after our first show came out, we resubmitted it. And it wouldn't resubmit because they're like, we already flagged this show. You can't just send it back. So now we have to get a special review from the Spotify content, uh, content team, which we've been in contact with. And they said, hey, we've sent it off to them and they're going to re-review it now that there's an actual episode. Re-review? What was the first review? Well, there's nothing there. Right. The first like review was you violated our terms by uploading nothing. So you got to be taken down. So now we have to get a re-review from the content team, which is going to happen sometime this week. And then they're when? gonna post the show. When? I don't know when, when that is. All right, all right. Now, <laughs> now. There's another thing. Oh, God. what? It's another issue. This don't is where. Make, this don't is make where me more mad. Tweet, tweet at Jesse and definitely DM him about this. At Jesse Blake. Even if you can find it, I still want you to do it because <laughs> because oh, I have gotten tweets as of this morning saying Jesse Adam cannot find the show on Google Play. That's your problem. Now. <laughs> Why is that the case? Because it, it's on Google. So what do I, am I searching? What am I searching? The Chris Johnston show. Also, the link is on our Twitter. Like I tweeted it out the, no, three I times yesterday. Uh, Tweet it directly to my brain. <laughs> it's not enough that it's there. At SDPN Sports. <laughs> at SDPN Sports on, um, Twitter. on Twitter. Or I'll just on SDPN.ca, there's like a, a show page for the Chris Johnston show. And yeah. you can click through and you can click it and go directly to Google. And there's the show. It exists. It, it, it was delayed on to be fair it was delayed on google it oh. didn't go up on google until i think sunday is when i got they, tweets this morning jesse what do i say to them they they need to recheck okay check their android phone <laughs> first of all get an iphone what are you doing oh. <laughs> first of all wow what are you, what are, they have like they have like little chocolate bar names for their google things just get a damn iphone the th the 13's coming out in like a month get that it's perfectly fine phone you don't need to be hipster about, hey, I need to move all no, my I, controls I everywhere. I have to customize literally everything. See? I remember I, You're an Apple plant. My friend uh, <laughs> my friend Rob, uh, who I love, you know Rob Basile, mm -hmm. um, was my the guy that hired me in Halifax. He works in the syndication arm at, at, at Bell. Um, and he was talking to me. He's like, you know, he, he's like, you really should consider Android. I said, why is that? And he said, uh, well, you can customize literally everything. Like, look at all the things that I have customized to fit my workflow. And I said, Rob... <laughs> Do I look like the type of guy who cares about that kind of shit? I said, really? I, I said, I understand. If that is what you're into, totally get it. Because I get it. Android phones are great, and I've considered buying them from time to time. Oh, have you? Jesse has already. Oh, where was this energy? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> mm. We'll get to that story in a second. But, but, but I said, Rob, I don't have time for that. All I want to know is is the is the talk is the texty app in the same spot every time is the music app in the same spot every time that's all I need I need Instagram I need text I need uh, 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 well I need some like I guess like Reddit and stuff like that but that's it I don't need that much don't don't give me that many opportunities that many choices because a I'll fuck them up b I'll be completely overwhelmed by them okay it is very overwhelming also Steve got a Samsung phone once. Uh, mm -hmm. For Twice. free, obviously, Twice, right. <laughs> and tried to switch over, and Jesse and I peer pressured him back. You got the one where you could see notifications on the side of the phone. 
there's a display that curved it over curved the side over. of the phone, and when it was sitting on, yeah. you had the side display. Do you remember that? Uh, uh, yes, and yes. For it was s- such a gimmick. For someone with, at the time, undiagnosed anxiety, I was like, why <laughs> is this phone making me vibrate? And I figured it out. Anyway, uh, it should be up on Google Play. Spotify as soon as we can. Also, our, our partners at The Athletic are helping with the Spotify part. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank goodness for that. So, um, you know, it's it, we're, everybody's on it, guys. We got The Athletic on it. We got us on it. We're we have trying. actual Spotify on it. Like yeah, they're, actual Spotify. They're but doing if, stuff. If you want to tweet somebody about it, <laughs> at Spotify Canada, just say, hey, guys, looking for the CJ show. Oh. When do you, can you guys reinstate it? No, don't be mean. No, be we mean. Love Spot- do not be no, mean. Ask like Polly Walnuts. <laughs> oh! Where's the podcast? Let's go now. Stop begging the table, please. Why? <laughs> You're going to put a hole in it. It's but not I'm a, very, a mobster and I don't understand expensive. manners. It's not a very expensive <laughs> thing. It didn't cost table. us a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you disrespect the TV stands I put together, but these little IKEA tables you freaking put together, this this, this is your baby now. Well, I think oh. I think what the thing is is that with these tables it's important you can't see it on camera, but there is a supporting beam in the middle of them. Mm-hmm. Because it'd be pretty easy to put someone through it. Yeah. <laughs> like this is the stuff that Bill's mafia would use to throw you through a table. Like on the, the Dudley boys. Yeah. 100%, 100%. Get the tables. <laughs> so, yes, I, I need that. They look great, but they're not. Uh, you know, listen, there's some maybe some. They're particle board. Yeah, you know? and, and they're light for a reason. Um, so there's that. So anyway, and and, and uh, I think the next thing here is um, we have a big announcement. Cool. Big Actually, don't just, forget. just in time for me to knock all the microphones out of the... No, out it's of all the, good. No, yeah. One okay. of the things I, I, I just want to say quickly again, tweet at Spotify, tell it Canada, tell them to put the CJ show back on their channel because we want to get it on Spotify, right? Say kindly, respectfully, Polly Walnuts. That works. So here's here's the next thing. And we've been... This is, this is part of the round of announcements. This is not the last announcement, but this is one of the biggest announcements we as a show have ever had. Whoa. And, and uh, honestly, I mean, I say that coming off of CJ and Julian. The Steve Dangle podcast and Amazon Prime what? have partnered up to give you a few things. Uh, the number one thing, if you're listening to this podcast early, what up early crew, we love you. This show is going to be up as early in the afternoon as we can get it. Um, we want to let you know that the youtube.com slash sdpn you will today at 9 p.m so that's the eastern september the 28th 9 p.m the center of the universe time you will get to watch the first five minutes of all or nothing toronto maple leafs from amazon prime on youtube.com slash sdpn it is the only place in the world well, you will get to see this. Because we stole it. <laughs> <laughs> we're thieves and we're just throwing it up and hoping for the best. That we're not going to get flagged by a company that can send a man to space. <laughs> How because you... we've added an extra show and we've gotten too big for our britches. How and we just think we rule the it? world now. Steve, what? how did you manage to hack into Amazon cloud services? I'm because I have an Android phone and I was able to customize it. And I, I put, I went into the settings and I said, "Steal." <laughs> <laughs> it's a very little known setting in Android phones. You can just steal. It's weirdly, all in Russian. Weird. Uh, uh, wow. I, wow. Wow. I, uh, no, no. I, I, I. Uh, this is a big deal. This is a big deal. Yeah. Um, so we will have the first five minutes before anywhere else on on Earth. Amazon Prime will not even have the first five minutes before us. <laughs> we scoop how- their own show. Yeah, and they were like, <laughs> sure. Uh, so we're going to do that. And here's the other part. This is so great. That will not be the only exclusive clip we have. On Thursday this week, barring any changes, because these things do change, but Thursday this week, 9 p.m., you will get another exclusive clip before Friday's release. So those are the two things. You're going to get to see two pieces of this documentary before anybody else anywhere has it. Before anybody else can watch it. Here's the second part of that. Documentary comes out October 1st. October 1st is Friday. We, all, f- all three of us, have seen the entire show. The whole thing. We saw it a couple weeks ago. We've been holding back. Stop bragging. And we have... I will not. I saw it before you. 
Steel. Ah! Steel. Steel. <laughs> what do you think of people who haven't seen it yet? Not as good. <laughs> Obviously, definitely not Android users. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, so in 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 the <laughs> great announcement. This guys. is spectacular. I'm so glad Amazon. I'm sure is thrilled that they worked with us. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, in the manner in which Steve built his career, LFR. Right. We know that's a big that's a big name. For, for, for this community. Oh, LFR. don't say it. It's a huge name. Jesse hates this. <laughs> this is why I'm going to say it. Remember, ask him where the podcast is on Spotify or Google Play. Uh, but beyond all that, it's important that you know that we are doing reaction episodes, the three of us, for each episode of All or Nothing Toronto Maple Leafs. So what that means here is that for episode one, we will have an, a half an hour reaction podcast and video. Episode two, another half an hour, three, four, five, all of them. So they're a half an hour each. You're going to be able to download them. You're going to be able to watch them. And they'll be released every single day starting October 1st all the way through the 5th. Because we want to give you some time to catch up. We realize that not everybody can watch five hours of television on a Friday. If you can, good for you. That's amazing. How many episodes? There are five episodes. <laughs> what did you just do for everybody who might be listening right. to the show? Screw them. <laughs> what on what platform? Google, Spotify, it's not on any of those. No, I did the Booker T five time. Five time also, celebration from WCW. Adam to watch that exclusive clip. It's even easier than going to youtube.com slash SDPN it or whatever. Is? It's even easier Steve's than that. Steve's got a headache, by the way. It's that SDPN.ca slash all or nothing. Oh! You go go to sdpn.ca slash all or nothing. You type that into your web browser on your on your Safari browser on your iPhone. Ah. You type that in. Mm. And no, then, Safari user. Boom. It'll pop up and there's the exclusive clip. Yeah. And and so what's important, what we wanted to do here was they, they asked us, they're like, do you want to do one one reaction podcast to the entire thing? And we thought, no, like, let's, it, we're, we're, we like to get granular with the Leafs, as you know, especially if you're a non-Leafs fan listening to the show, and there are many. And we thought, let's go, let's dive deep on this. Let's get into really what happened here. So our podcasts are half the length of the actual episodes themselves. We go deep, and we're, there's, got, there's a lot of stuff in this. I think it's longer. <laughs> I think we're longer than half. Well, maybe. But, <laughs> but the, the, the point here is there's so much in this documentary. Mm -hmm. You can read the reviews. The reviews are whatever the reviews. I, I never really read reviews because, to me, it's always about how I feel about it. Unless it's Chris Johnston's. And then I read it. And you subscribe. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a big believer in, in, in taking it for what it's worth. So if you want to have a conversation around this, um, uh, we are going to have these. And this is so great because... Friday, like our, usually we do two shows a week and then the regular season kicks off and we do three shows a week. Thursday, we have a, an episode. That means Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, we have episodes and then our show on top of it and CJ's show. There's so much happening right now with the network. So we're very excited, very excited to partner with Amazon. So remember tonight, nine o'clock, you will see the first five minutes of All or Nothing youtube.com slash sdpn no no, no. Give, oh! give give the right sdpn.ca slash all or nothing thank you thank you jesse sorry about that that's okay um and like i said we have more insane exciting announcements to come i'm so pumped about this but we're very excited to get into this and i'm actually really pumped to, for you guys to to talk about this to, to see this these reaction episodes because you know steve's usually doing these lfrs on his own yes but we have created our own brand now i have parents to guide me through yeah. my rants. These are called the AONFR. Oh, AONFR. No. Amazon All or Nothing. MFers. That's what we're doing. <laughs> AONFR. <laughs> and we'll BRB with those and all those other MSN by abbreviations. EOD. Uh, EOW. Sorry. EOW. That'll be out by EOW. Oh, that's EOD. Oh, yeah. right. No, so, EOD is far too soon. Right. 100%. So, yeah, we want your comments. We want your reaction. We're super pumped to be working with that. So, with that, very excited about that announcement. And, yes. Are you asking if we'll have more announcements in the next episode? Probably fair to say that for the next couple of weeks, we're going to have a big announcement every episode. It's uh, it's just one of those times. It's going to be crazy. So um, this is going to be a hard right turn. Yes. But the biggest story in hockey did not happen in the NHL. And the biggest story in hockey going into training camp and preseason games is not hockey. It's hockey culture. And and frankly, it, it goes into it's a very human thing. Uh, in the worst way, 
Um, I'm sure by now you're familiar with what happened in the Ukrainian League, uh, where Jalen Samaric, um, who is playing there, um, had a extremely awful racist gesture thrown his way by Andre Dennis Deniskin. Now, I I don't I, I mean I think you've probably seen it. You probably were outraged by it, and if you weren't, come on, yes you were, and. It's one of those things that you, when you watch this clip, you cannot believe that it happened. Yeah. You cannot believe that this isn't, this isn't some bad B-rated, B, B-C movie uh, 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 villain. You cannot believe that. If you wrote it into a script, it would not be a believable character, and yet here we are. This is the level of... Uh, so many words, ignorance, racism, whatever you want to call it. That's how low this, this move was. And, you know, obviously we don't need to be the ones to tell you that racism is bad. For me, you know, cause we could sit here and go, what the hell was he thinking? Well, obviously what the hell was he thinking? Right. Uh, of course, racism is bad. Of course, this is outrageous. Of course, it's absolutely insane. Mm-hmm. But I think more importantly is what is going to happen? Well, and there's there's someone else involved in this, and I I, I don't remember his name, but it's uh, the new double IHF president. That would be Luke Tardif. Mm-hmm. Luke Tardif. Who was uh, elected two days ago, three days ago now. <laughs> right way to kick off his campaign. Right? Yeah. So uh, he, obviously the double IHF has issued a statement condemning it. Mm -hmm. I know people like people were making fun of the fact that, Oh, they're doing an investigation. Mm -hmm. Like what is there to investigate? There's a video right there. Legally. I don't think it works that way. Um, I imagine they're doing all sorts of due diligence that is so boring. None of us would even think about it. Sure. Um, But I, if I just had to make a gut guess, uh, they will have, come down with some sort of punishment on this player by the time the show is up. And cuz this is something that as much man. as they need to do their due diligence, they do need to sh- they need to act quickly because it's so important that they're shown to, to have a strong force against this. Yeah. If they delay on this, it's one of those things that it doesn't look good. They're they're going to whip the book I think right between that guy's eyebrows. It's mm-hmm. it's not going to be a good week for him Jesse when you watch something like that having experienced this directly and I'm sorry to do this to you because this kind of puts you on the spot but having experienced this directly yourself and you know you have everybody has a reaction when you watch a video like that Mm -hmm. I want to know what yours was the first the first immediate reaction is a shock that it's something that would happen in 2021 you think uh, banana gestures like that are outdated and it, it feels like something that harkens back to 40 50 years ago what uh, uh Deniskin did like it it's but then you after like the shock obviously wears off and then you process it and you're like this no this is something that still exists in the game of hockey right. and it's and it hasn't been eradicated because that's that's just the, the nature of the game and how slow it is but it should be something that isn't acceptable at all in the game of hockey, you know? I, I did see some people point towards attitudes in Eastern Europe mm-hmm. about this, and I'm like, guys, like, okay, maybe. Like, there might be something to that, but, like, Wayne Simmons had a banana thrown at him in London? Mid, mid-shootout in London, London Ontario, mm-hmm. and that was, I believe, less than 10 years ago. I think it was 2012. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I remember that. Actually, found it would have been, been, well, he's our age, so it would have been a little longer ago than that. Um, because he, uh, but even so, it's it's within the last. No, no, it was an exhibition game. Oh, yes, the Flyers like exhibition. It was, game. it was, oh, yeah, it was an sorry, NHL game in London. Sorry, I don't even know why I'm debating on you. Now. My apologies. I'm no, just derailing it's, this. It's all right. I, uh, you know, because it, uh, I'm torn on stuff like this because I see it on Twitter. Right? This is where everybody saw it, right? You see it on sure. Twitter. And what happens is people retweet it with a comment and they, you know, they say how they feel about it. And I've done this many, many times. One of the things I'm torn about 
and, and why I didn't tweet about it um, personally is it was so offensive that I couldn't bear reposting that and giving that credence beyond this show. And what I say that is I can tweet and maybe uh, a 3% of, of you know you who listen will, will see that tweet. But what that does do is it perpetuates the action that happened. Right, you're, nothing... you're amplifying the video of a guy making a blatantly racist racist gesture. Yes, and and it's the same stuff, not in the same, not in the, exactly this, not in the same context. But it's like when people got really upset at Hockey Night in Canada for replaying the John Tavares injury. Hey, this is a this is an injury. You shouldn't be retweeting this. You shouldn't be putting it on the front page, Toronto Sun. Right? With with things like this, I'm starting to feel like. Like, thankfully, we have a show we can talk about this, but I, I have to, I want to say to you, if you are on Twitter and you are outraged by this, and that's completely understandable because, of course, um, I'm going to I'm gonna suggest that maybe you don't retweet with comment on that one. Does that make sense? Do, am I wrong on that? Or, like, and I'm throwing this out there as a complete, I don't know, it just felt, that one felt wrong. I think you know where most people stand on the subject is is retweeting that with a comment what's that doing that's interesting yeah because well, i didn't want to right i think condemning it has a place okay and to in order to condemn it like people have to know it exists and i and not hiding behind that the fact that these things happen in society is also um a fair suggestion you know it's like okay this racist thing happened and thankfully we exist in this time frame where people have cell phones, where everything is now a global incident. Nothing mm -hmm. is, this could have happened locally in the Ukraine and we could have never heard about it ever. I, I've never seen a highlight from the UHL ever. So so thankfully we're in a time where uh, something happens in the Ukraine in hockey and we, us here in Canada know that exists. So in order to get that out there, somebody has to Retweet it. make it news, you know? Right. Whether we leave that up to the credited new news organizations to talk about it is up for debate as well. But it's important not to hide the fact that these things happen. You know, it's important that we're sitting here right now talking about it and explaining that this is wrong and the reaction and what needs to come from this is that it needs to be shut down. So maybe it is something you drag out in the open because here it is. Mm -hmm. Here it is blatant. Yes. Okay? That was just a thought that I had. I wasn't and that's why I personally didn't. But you know, it's one of those things. You. That's why I wanted to talk about it. Yeah. I was, was, wasn't sure. So here's, here's, here's what's important, right? You know, Luke Tardif put out a, a statement. That's nice. The uh, uh, the guy that that uh, um, that gave, um, that that did the gesture. He, Andre Daniska. Andre Daniska apologized. Um, he. It was a non-apology. Yeah, Jalen Samaric. Uh, wasn't really sold on it. Yeah, the, 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 well, vi the victim him. didn't accept his apology, yeah. so it was the apology didn't happen. Right, right. And and let me ask you this: not that not that it doesn't matter, but I would ask you how much it matters whether or not this guy apologized. And I, I think it does matter that he apologized. Do you want me to read it? Yeah, I want. I do want you to read it because the article that I pulled has been, or that I have pulled has been pulled down. Oh, wow. So oh. Um, the, the the statement that I had is actually gone. So let's so go ahead, please. This is uh, Doniskin. During the match, I, being of negative emotions, displayed a gesture that could be considered as an insult relating to race. I respect all people, regardless of their race or nationality. Emotions in hockey, unfortunately, are different. Such behavior of hockey players on the ice is unacceptable within the framework of a civilized society. Um, it should be noted that disciplinary proceedings will be opened against. In oh, that was the statement from the uh, the league. Yeah, so that oh. that's where it ended. It, it ended where he says, "I respect all people of their race or nationality. Emotions in hockey, unfortunately, are different." So he's not admitting to it because if he admits to it, is a if he admits to this, his punishment. Then the AAHF can say, "See, you admitted to it. Now we're going to really throw this against you." But what they're trying to do is prepare for. The inevitable, when the double IHF comes in and, and suspends this guy forever and ever, he's going to come back and go, well, it wasn't meant as racist. And that's where they're going to try to blur the lines here. doesn't matter that it was. And, and I think, actually, it was Donovan Bennett that tweeted, uh, uh, he retweeted this, and he said, how comfortable he was doing it tells the story. Yeah. This was not a, it didn't seem like it was the first time, right? And, and so, uh, I, I, 
the and of course you know, who would accept that apology so now it'll be it, it's it behooves the double ihf to to really come in strong here and the part i struggle with is okay so you you suspend the guy forever he never played professional hockey again what change does that elicit it's i grant you it's better than nothing it's better than a slap on the wrist but are we changing the culture within the game internationally by only a suspension or a ban and i don't think that we are so what i am going to say is that i think and the double ihf and the nhl barely work together on this stuff anyway and of course, we know the struggles the NHL has with dealing with these issues as well. I think that they got to do more than just that. I think it's important that Double IHF takes a stand here, donates money, does something. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, what yes. are we doing? What are we doing to 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 root this out? Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's like it's one thing. It's like I've got. Um, it can't just be deterrence. Right, exactly. Because yeah. deterrence are not going to solve this, right? And I know you're not going to solve, you know, uh, a long-rooted racism in Eastern Europe and, frankly, the world. But East mm-hmm. Europe as a whole has a huge problem with racism, and we're all well aware of it. Huge, huge problem with racism going back centuries. But I think the AAHF here does have to go beyond just a ban. That's just my personal opinion. I understand. Like something proactive. Mm-hmm. Bingo. Yeah. I don't know what that is though, but that's not my job. Yeah. How do they make it clear that this isn't acceptable on the ice, behind closed doors, anywhere in a walk of life? You know? I don't know. I don't know either. Yeah. But th- this is the thing. Uh, we don't have to have all the answers, but we got to try to find them. Yeah. Uh, right? CJ made an interesting point yesterday on the Chris Johnson show. He He mentioned that even if the suspension, say it's like a 10-year ban, a five-year ban, um, a reporter was was tweeting about how it would mean even more if like it was a one-year ban, but then nobody in hockey uh, chose to sign him ever again. Mm. Like, well, that'll the ho- never happen, though. The hockey community, but it, we've seen it happen twice in the NHL in the last year, where guys who have had questionable behavior get jobs, get second chances. It would mean even more if hockey just refused to accept uh, Deniskin ever again in the community. Mm-hmm. It yeah. Whenever someone uh, does something, we automatically are like, all right. So which KHL team they sign up with? Right. Yeah. 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 Just, it would be nice. Exactly. It yeah. would be nice if there was never a job waiting for him. I just don't. Here's the thing, though. That's why I don't see that happening. It's specifically what 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 Steve said. It's like if someone does something wrong, uh, which KHL team are they signing with? Right. It's the hmm. it's the it's that somebody will always step up and sign the odious contract because they don't care. That's that's tough. I don't know what the right answer is. I don't either. Yeah. I don't either. I'm just raising the point that maybe we ought to look at this. And and so anyway, it's it's a. I'd be surprised if there isn't a decision today. I would yeah. be too. Yeah. I think they got to do it. And I, I don't think, like, listen, I, I think you got to do your due diligence. If you're the double IHF, you got to fly people in. You got to do investigations. You know that his team quietly is going to, like, his, the teammates aren't going to say anything. You know, like, that's just the way these things work. But it's not as simple as, like, Twitter condemnation. You see it and then he's banned. Yeah, no, it doesn't work right. like that. You have to legally do things and, yeah. and stuff. I, I I think that they need to come in and they need to come in strong, but I'd like to see more than just preventative measure. Do you know what I'm saying? I understand. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I don't, not that I think that this is any, you know, that, that the two are completely the same because um, we have a little bit more of an insidious form of it in, in Canada. We're not as out with it, but it exists. Mm-hmm. Um. I hope the NHL is taking a good, long, hard look at this because, um, you know, they've had issues in the past with the, the Alliance and, um, uh, and they need to really look at 
changing this. This is their chance, right? They lead the world on this. And I, I really, you know, I, I like imagine, okay, this guy, nobody grows up not wanting to play in the NHL, right? Unless you're like, there's a few players that have decided like that they didn't want to play, but most will want to come to the NHL, right? If the NHL inextricably says like it, there's absolutely no way that any of this could even be talked about, thought about, not going to happen. I feel like that might have an effect too. And they still say, they say that, but I'm not seeing it in the grassroots level. And there've been complaints about that as well. And so uh, not to belabor the point, but I do feel like everybody's got to kind of step up here because this is, this is all hockey. This Mm -hmm. isn't just, Oh, that's, that's the Ukraine's problem. It's more than that. Right. Fair. It feels like, I don't, I don't want to call it a watershed moment to, to, um, to make the situation more serious than it is. Well, you can't get more serious, but a it feels sand, like maybe. Yeah, it yeah. feels like right now there's a chance to really make a decision here and make it matter, and and let people know what the stance is on racist gestures. You know, <laughs> like that. It's just not allowed. Like you can't do this sort of thing within the game of hockey. You know, and there's a chance to really show that here with um, a, a punishment that fits the crime. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. Jesse's got it up on the screen. It's, it's yeah. wild. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. I'm glad we had that conversation, though, because I've always, I've always been mixed about some of that stuff. Like, you know, do you hide it? Do you do you talk about it? Do you bring it, drag it out in the open? And now that I've talked about it with you guys, I'm like, oh, no, drag that shit out in the open. Let people see that. Yeah. Up, you know? Yeah. I didn't quote tweet it because I'm like, well, everyone's seen it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Already. It's, yeah. Okay. Well, listen, it was, it's not an easy story to talk about. And we do have to, you know, we have to go on and be the f- fun-loving show that we are. And so we're going to have to take a, yeah. a hard right turn out of this, as right. we like to call it. Let me turn my yuck yuck switch back I know, on. I know, <laughs> I know, I know. But it's, it's what, like, listen, man, I, I want, people always t- say this, and I said this before, I want this to be an escape. Yeah. But it can't be an escape while this shit is happening. Well, what do you want us to do? Yeah, that's the thing. You can't you can't leave these things behind closed doors. Yes, you know you need like I I'm a I'm a big fan of just letting people be who showing their true colors out in the open, and then you deal with that. You know we can't hide hide behind this and pretend it didn't happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You need to talk about it. You need to show people the video that this is happening still in 2021 in hockey. Bingo. So here's the hard right turn. You ready? I'm going to run you through some of the key dates that are actually happening in the NHL this year because everything is still a little bit off. We're starting the season a couple weeks later. Mm-hmm. It is a hard right turn, but hey, we might as well start with some dates, right? No, no, I was saying just a, a little bit off. Everything. Yeah, so um, so here's here's what we know from Elliot Friedman. Trade deadline will be March 21st. So that's significantly off. Like huge. Because that's, what, a full month later? Uh, yeah, thereabouts, and it's because of the Olympics, right? It's not just the season starting a week or two late; it's the Olympics. Yes, which will put us a month late. And I have to tell you, as somebody, you know, we now run a network in hockey. It's it's uh, I definitely wanted hockey to end July first. There's no question. I wanted free agency to be to be done. I'm I'm not I'm very excited, and I like my job very much. But heading into the season, there's an element of <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Be, well, because we just finished, <laughs> we just finished at the end of July, and we know we're going until mid July next year, right? Yeah. So like it's a long slog, right? And 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 by the way, everybody we talk to within the game who reports on the game, who plays in the game, who manages the game, everybody is quietly saying the same thing. It's not great to say publicly because people are like, whatever, you you work in hockey. It's no. amazing. <laughs> it's wonderful. Yeah, it is. But it's going to be crazy. It's going to be a crazy time. I'm excited. It's like, you know, you ever go to a party knowing you have work tomorrow? Mm-hmm. It's more of a young people thing. But I used to do it. Uh-huh. And I used to go, this is going to be great. And also, this is going to hurt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Now, And I was right. What on I'm, both counts. What I'm personally excited for is NHL GMs on, on literally Caffeine Brain. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because that's what's going to happen, right? They're all going to be burnt out by March, 3rd, March 21st. You know that. So they're going to make some wacky moves. I'm excited about that. Free agency will start July 13th. That one's not so bad. That's not bad. It's a couple weeks later. It's amazing that they'll catch up. But also, I've always found there is way too much time between the end of the playoffs and like like why can't we get to the draft like three days late like just get it done and then free agency it's pretty close 
Like it's like a week. They don't need two weeks. It depends back. on how long the cup final goes. Yeah, that's true. It does right? Like it could be just over a week, or it can be two if the, two full weeks. Uh, one team got their ass kicked. Yeah, so, if it's Montreal, Tampa. RFA's uh, uh, Friedman also reports RFA's must sign by December first. So that's the same as the William Nylander year. That is the same. Yes, uh, and potentially significant this year. Potential. Still, three Hughes, big Patterson, names aren't signed. Kachuk, yeah. Huge, huge, and then. Uh, players uh, on one-year contracts can extend on January 1st. That's the same. Other dates, uh, last possible day of the Stanley Cup playoffs will be June 30th. The buyout great. period will open July 1st, so there'll be some excitement on Canada Day, which is great. Uh, NHL draft will be in Montreal. I know Steve is talking about driving out for that. I would like to. And everybody's favorite, salary arbitration! Hey! Woo! July 27th through August 11th. So, you know oh. what? I have to give the schedule makers a lot of credit here because <laughs> remember how the last 18 months have gone mm-hmm. and here we are almost back to a normal schedule a season later. Do you want to hear a fun story about the MLB schedule? Yeah. For yeah. Uh, 20 years, uh, up until I think about five years ago, the MLB schedule was handmade by uh, a couple in, I think, think in a midwestern state in the united states no way they they um they every year they renewed the contract and they had to beat out the, all the top universities in the in the states like harvard and mit and stanford all those places because they were like we have these algorithms that can that can build your schedule for you major league baseball and every year major league baseball would re-sign with this couple in this, in this random midwestern state because they would do it by hand and they would commit to it for months and reschedule and schedule every single game according to this uh, the best ways to schedule a baseball season. Are you making this up? This is a true thing that happened. That has to be Bud for Zula for games. like twenty five years they did this. Wow. Yeah, and and to eventually I think like half a decade ago MLB finally found a computer system that could be as good as this couple because up until then nobody's computer could schedule a season as good as these two individuals. Oh, so they're good at it. Yeah. Sorry, that wasn't my (laughs) assumption when you tell me all these schools and algorithms aren't as good as this random couple in like Idaho or something. Yeah, but it's believable when you consider where our phones were at. I mean, we were still using like TwitPic five or six years ago, right? Mm -hmm. You know? Fair enough. (laughs) Fair enough. So Instagram had five filters. Like it was, it's things have changed a lot, right? Right. I can see that. So, so I assume the NHL schedule, you punch it into a computer, it does its thing, and then it needs some finessing by some humans. All right. Very interesting. Art, that maybe this couple, with all their free time, is doing the NHL schedule, and that's why it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. It could be. Could be. Could be. Um, now, we, we actually got to see some hockey this weekend. Saturday night. Yay. Elliot Friedman in a, in a turtleneck. I don't think he'll be able. To, will he be allowed to wear a turtleneck for Hockey Night in Canada? He's Elliot Friedman. He can wear with a, whatever the hell he wants. Is that how he talks now? Yes, okay. I'm Elliot Friedman. Okay. This, is, <laughs> this is Thirty-two Thoughts. <laughs> but I'm Jeff Merrick. Just him and both have him in a studio with a cigarette, just ashing as he's going. No, it never smokes on it. Just ashes it. It's, well, what's it going to be? Thirty-three next year. There's too many damn teams. Um, Leafs and Canadians. The first two games. One the Leafs win. One the Canadians win. No one really cares. But what you're looking for in these games is improvements or developments from singular players or lines or combinations. So we'll start with Saturday night. A lot of people talking about Josh Hosek. Mm-hmm. What do you think? I thought he was extremely good um, for the first preseason game. And he, he, what I liked out of the Leafs there because it was it was interesting. It was a very sloppy game, and I eventually, at some point in the second period, look up at the shots, and I'm like, Montreal's getting their ass kicked. But it didn't feel like that. So I didn't learn until after the game that Montreal landed in Toronto at 3.30. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. Three and a, wow. Like three and a half hours before puck drop. So that's, that's hilarious. But what I noticed out of Saturday's roster is the theme is effort. Right, the the theme is maximum effort, and yes, it was sloppy. I don't expect the first preseason game uh, to be anything but that. But the theme for the team was effort, and Hosang was maximum effort. Him, Bunting, 
All the NHL guys led the way, I thought. Yep, Tavares with a a, a Tavares goal. That's yep. a Tavar, that's vintage John Tavares. Nylander dominating on account of he's supposed to. Mm-hmm. It uh, wasn't really fair. No. It felt like the regular NHL has just looked so much better than everybody. But the Habs had a lot. They did. That's true. But the the plane, the like uh, Nick Suzuki's quote after the game is hilarious. He's like, I think it looks like we landed at... 3.30 for our first preseason game. Why did they not? Why did they schedule it? I don't know. They didn't know. have to do that. Like, why are? Why would you put your That's players through that? up to you. They're right. Montreal. There must have been, I don't know. Some. I don't know. Flight canceled? They couldn't drive? Like, what? Like it's not that far. Anyway. Hosang looked really good, but he did. There was one play where he made a pass in his own end mm-hmm. and was admiring it, and he got nailed. And it could have been really bad. And there's been a bunch of that over the first two games. Leafs getting nailed. Habs getting nailed. It's just, uh, it's just one of those things at the beginning of the preseason where it's a reminder that you're playing in the National Hockey. Was it Game One where Rich Clune laid that big hit? It was Curtis Gabriel. Oh, okay. Curtis, uh, what the guy who went over the bench? Yeah, that was Curtis Gabriel on. It was an NHL player too. Yeah. I can't, I can't remember. That, oh, uh, Romanov. You saying guys getting murdered, that's what it reminded me of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, and, yeah. and like Brennan Manel getting mm-hmm. destroyed yesterday. And who? And otherwise, I thought he looked pretty good. Um, there, there were a lot of big hits in mm-hmm. these games. What did you think of the Curtis Gabriel fight? I thought he looked exhausted when it began. <laughs> <laughs> and good for him for trying. I mean, it's no, it's not that he's not tough. It's just that like he... He went into that, like, I think yes. it was 50 seconds into a shift. He should not be taking 50-second shifts ever. Like, that's not his <laughs> that's role not his game. Yeah. at all. And I saw a lot of people like, oh, man, this guy can't skate, and he's brutal, and like, you're just not getting his role on the team. What's his role? Define it right now. To hit guys over the boards and get in fights and stuff like that. He got into a fight because he laid another hit. Like, Is every- he an NHLer? I mean, is he based NHL on in what that role? In based that on, role, yeah. On like, on the Leafs, does, is he playing a bottom six role? Anyone's an NHLer, depending on what you want. John Scott was never an NHLer a day in his life, but he they wanted <laughs> I, I him. Think That's argue all-star with you. MVP John Scott to you, sir. <laughs> he was, dude. They they signed him, I think, to an AHL contract for the Iowa Wild, right? And he had never fought, to my knowledge. But big man go boom. And they made him into that. John Scott played 286 NHL That's games. That's amazing. Don't yep. disrespect That's him. That's amazing. Not, no, listen. He's good. He scored. He scored. There's a hilarious... There's a picture on the internet of him having just scored a goal in Toronto um, on the breakaway. I think he was with the Sabres. And there's a dejected Leaf fan, like, uh, standing right at the glass. And that's my cousin. Oh! <laughs> I was just like, hey, man, you're on TV. Man, dark times for the Leafs. Dark, dark times. Yeah, no, like, it's... I'm not saying he didn't play nearly 300 games in the NHL. He did. But if you're talking about your most skilled lineup... That's not which is it. Which is the discussion around Curtis Gabriel, right? In order to have your most skilled lineup, no, he's not going to be in it. Like, just flatly, no. Right. But if you need some somebody who's like, oh, I'm going to throw some knuckles. It's an 82 game season, yep. and sometimes you're going to want to kick some ass. Like, okay, the fourth line in game one had little SDA in the middle, flanked by Rich Clune <laughs> <laughs> and Curtis Gabriel. He should have just skated to the net every time he had the puck. Yeah. Like, You're with, not passing it. With literally an armored escort of Rich Clune and Curtis Gabriel. Who's touching you? Nobody. Nobody. Anyway. That's a hell of a lineup, eh? Yeah. That's Sheldon keep going. This is going to be fun. This is him <laughs> going LOL Knuckles and just <laughs> throwing them out there. It's real peaceful when they're on the ice. Isn't it? It's, yeah. Yes, it's extremely peaceful. I listen. I don't think he's going to be a regular. I also don't think they signed him to be in the AHL. I uh, just a, a note on on uh, uh, not Curtis Gabriel, um, Rich Clune's intensity. So I interviewed him four or five years ago, and I think it was for BT. It was for BT, and he was at that time the Marlies captain. I think he still is, right? He's a he's part of the leadership group. I think so. That. But he was brought in to like 
get the boys to the gym. And I remember, like, he was a big part of what Nylander, like, you know, some of that development, whatever. Mm-hmm. Him and Justin Johnson. Yeah. Yes, Justin Johnson. And he said, when I asked him, I said, like, what are your expectations for the Marlies this year? Right? Like, what, what are you guys hoping to do? And he said, well, my focus is on making the Toronto Maple Leafs. And, every t- and I know the reaction you just gave me. He was not going to make the Toronto Maple Leafs. But what I like about Rich Clune and what I thought about that, I thought about that answer later because I thought that's kind of a non-answer, um, is that it's not that he thinks he's going he, – first off, you have to bet on yourself and you have to believe in yourself. But it's not – for him, it will never be good enough to not be on the Toronto Maple Leafs and that if he was on the Toronto Maple Leafs, it will never be good enough not to make the playoffs. And then as a, as a – in the playoffs, it'll never be good enough not to win the Stanley Cup. Like, that's the sort of mentality that that guy has. And Every... the, the more people you can surround him that that are young and impressionable, like an SDA, and, and maybe Rich Kloon is not the most talented guy, but that kind of attitude rubs off on people, and, especially young ones. And he's played a few hundred games, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty oh, sure. Yeah. Like, I'm not trying to take away from him, but you know what I'm saying? It's like, there's this, I am, it will never be good enough. Is he ever going to be in the Leafs' most skilled lineup? No. No. Could you use him? Yes. Yeah. You could. That's what I'm saying, but I know people are going to take my John Scott thing out of context. No, and Curtis Gabriel, but- <laughs> obviously, uh, uh, that's that's sort of the, the role. So, yeah, to answer that question, fair. Yeah. Fair, fair enough. Now, did you, want, did you have more you want to add? Uh, every player on the Marley's singular focus should be making the Leafs. I don't care if they're on an NHL deal or not because they've signed uh, Pavel Gogolev. Um, in the past, Justin Hall. They've they've signed guys on AHL deals to NHL deals because they were so good. Yep. Now, uh, I do want to talk about Ilya Mikheyev, who for the first two games has played both mm-hmm. and looked good in both. However, when does he ever look bad? He never. He you know what? Honestly, never looks bad. The only put time the, he looks put bad, the puck in the net. <laughs> well, no finish. That's yeah. when he looks bad. When he's within about five feet of the net or has a scoring chance. Mm-hmm. And his shootout goal. It was amazing. I was like, wh- where, where did those that? hands come from? Well, and so so I'm looking at his stick. Am I wrong? His stick is long. He's got a him. penalty killer stick. Is that what it is? It's almost like he needs a penalty kill stick and a five on five Cause, stick. Because you know when you have to borrow your, your, your big cousin's stick or your big brother's stick and you're playing road hockey and half the shaft is out the other side? No. And it, like it, well, I've never experienced you've that. Never, well, you well, have never experienced that. <laughs> But if I only what played is this with a short stick sticks. for ants? <laughs> Every stick is a mini stick. <laughs> okay, so Jesse's never experienced that. If you're Jesse's height, you've never experienced that. But for the rest of us that grew up at a normal height, or okay. were slightly smaller like I was, you, you have to choke up on it. And I feel like for him, like my dad, I remember my dad told me, he's like, you're going to grow too much this season, so I'm not cutting your stick down because I don't want to replace it. Sticks were like 10 bucks, but my dad's like, no, we're not replacing your stick. So I had a Titan stick, and for the first half of the year, I had to choke up on it, right. choke high, because like, he's like, why would I buy you another stick? You're playing house league. What, like, what is this? Learn to play choked up, whatever. And, uh, and uh, I, it is funny. It was very much my father, who I love. Uh, and, and so I, uh, when I see Mikheyev do that, when I see him come in, his, his elbow is, is like up here. It's super high. And, and, you can see the struggle when he tries to make a quick move with the puck. The skill is there, mm-hmm. but I'm wondering if there's got to be some equipment equipment adjustments there. I know that's far be it from me, guy who played single A hockey at max, to to tell that guy. But it, it's noticeable. You I think it's in it. his head. It's really? in his head, and I mean the the offensive instincts to get into those positions is so clearly there. Like there's a dangerous yes. player just waiting to roar out of him, I think. Yep. Um, but I can't remember if it was Dave Poulin or Jeff O'Neill. It's, yes, it's preseason. Yes, these games suck. I If he can get a couple before the season begins, like what a confidence boost, right? And now, now I worry that the preseason is reinforcing the wrong things for him mm-hmm. because he's getting a thousand opportunities and he's still not marrying them. It's oh, that's got to be and like, I, I like I wonder how he feels on the bench seeing the friggin' goals Curtis Gabriel and David Kampf got. Like, Even Andre, where's Ka- mine? And, and everybody's like raving about Andre Kasha's goal. I mean, it was sort of a, it's he, a pretty nice goal. It was a nice goal, but it was like a pass across the crease. It was a better half. setup than it was a goal. Right. Sure, yeah. yeah. That the credit isn't going. Andre Kasha was in position. That's where he should have been. Yeah. 
He was in position and right-handed. That's and, what made yes. that goal happen. And McKayev must be yeah. thinking, what the hell? Like, why can't I get one of those? Ah! Also, it's preseason. Yeah. If, if you got your goal, McKayev, it doesn't count. I hope, though. <laughs> wow. It's preseason. That's, that's true. But I hope to get him on. You know how <laughs> athletes are. They're very superstitious, and they're very much like streaky, get on a roll, whatever. Whenever he does get that goal, I hope the Leaf bench goes bananas for him. Oh, yes. To build his confidence because he deserves that. You know what's you know what's easier, Jesse? Like, oh, yes, it doesn't count. You know, you know what's easy? What? Doing something for the second time. You know what I mean? Even yeah. though the first time was a fake time. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or for him, like I'm sure, hey, doing something for the fourth time. Like maybe right, he right. leads the NHL in preseason scoring by the time this is done. <laughs> That'd be nice. It will it no, it'll be good for his confidence. Like if someone like if if an NHL player, I don't know, let's let's pick a name out of a hat, Willie. Like if he plays four what? preseason games and he is garbage in all of them, you can't tell me that's not going to mess with his head a little. See, I'm, I'm Maybe of not the mind really, that he can't be bothered by that, right? right. And yeah. I'm of the mind that preseason means a l- really nothing, almost nothing to these players. It's more of practicing. Yeah, I'm so you know, I see I'm you so watching. distracted <laughs> by what you have on your screen. I'm so red I mist gotta... angry at. I need one of those things where it blocks or, the yeah, side view. That. What do you have? Steve What's, is. He's got Tic Tac Tomar showing Travis Dermott doing a spinorama in his own end in Montreal, which is exactly what he did the last time he played a game in Montreal. And I'm going to strangle someone, and he's not here. So which one is it going to be? Pick. So I think I got the thicker neck. Adam better, Smaller. Better yeah. so, to Adam, I don't know if you if you watched it last night when uh, Dermot was, did his. Spin. He was not good, but he did he did his good. little spin in the uh, in the defensive and zone that works again. In preseason. And it it doesn't work in game seven of the or game six of the Stanley Cup. Playoffs. You know who's one of the best skaters I've ever seen? Eric Carlson. Yes. Eric Carlson could maybe do that in the playoffs. And has. And has not today. Not today. His ankle. No, no, I'm talking gone. pre pre destructed ankle. Yeah. Uh, uh, Travis Dermott <laughs> can do that in preseason. He cannot it, do that. It he bothered me that. immensely that he's still working on the move. That's that's <laughs> the thing is too. Like as a coach, that's who he is, mm-hmm. right? And, and now playing the right side. Like, you see penciled in as the third guy on the right side? Seems like I think it. so, yeah. But if he does shit like that, not for long, man. <laughs> yeah. He's so useful. It costs he do you a whole game. It's a season! It costs you a season! There were 13 to 3, the sh- or 13 to 1 the shots were when he did this move? Yes! Yes, listen. Playoffs, <laughs> overtime, that's when autopilot comes in. Yeah. And that's autopilot. Uh-huh. Now, for it's um, what a talented player who we love that that is autopilot. We want to see him succeed. But like, okay, so that move was sick. Like he, <laughs> he yeah. so he ruins the guy. But like, who did he? He got turnstiled by someone in the game. He there, there were two players in particular in game one and game two who are frankly fighting for their spot in the lineup, but are also established NHL players. Rasmus Sandin was not good in game one. Yeah. He was brutal. And yeah, Travis Dermott was the, not good in game two. A lot of the projected lines that people were throwing out on Twitter after the game had Sandin in the seventh slot. You know, they just didn't have him making the roster. Yep. Oh. I. Listen, wait, you got to be better. Well, You uh, have to be better. Yes, and here's the thing. Maybe he doesn't make it out of camp. Maybe he's the seventh guy out of camp. Mm-hmm. But that stuff keeps going on. That's why they love Bogosian so much. You knew what Bogosian that's was going to do. That's if a you're, great point. If you're going to be a bottom pair defenseman, the coach wants to send you out and trust you. Yeah. That's the thing. Because the, the top pair guys have a role that is like a mega role. It's a very important. Those bottom two guys are either fighting for a top four role or you're there to be predictable. I can put you out in a pinch for 45 seconds before I got to roll the other two lines to close the game out. Right? You know, with three minutes to go... I don't want Travis Dermott out there in a one-goal game doing that. And he might say, well, Travis would never do that. Wouldn't he? Wouldn't he? You mean the thing he did already? I'm pre-arguing with people on the internet. (laughs) Wouldn't he do that? Would he not? No, well, that argument's dead forever. Yeah. Yeah, no, please don't come at me with that. 
Oh, he would know better than that. He wouldn't be that stupid. For as much as we gave this guy shit constantly I when he was Travis. here, Ron Hainsey, oh. at least when he was out there, Babcock knew what you're getting from Hainsey. I was against the whole 45 minutes a night thing. Mm -hmm. Like, I think he that been was... great the on the third <laughs> pair. Oh. But... but even even well, I, I was gonna throw out Ro Roman Polak as well, but that was a different circumstance. But with Hainsey, like it was it was it was a steady defenseman. Mm -hmm. You knew what you were getting, and with Dermot, I'm worried. <laughs> Bogo was perfect. He yeah. was perfect, and he would have been perfect again. It's a shame. It's and a now he's Bogo have. replacement. They do not. Bogo <laughs> they do not have a Bogo replacement at all. Mm -hmm. No, like I'm I, sure they'd be looking to make a move for one though. I don't even know who that would be other than Bogo. Well, because like. They have guys who can play NHL games for them. Brennan Manel. He's not Bogosian. Where's Lilligren Tim in Timothy the Lilligren? Yeah. Different line, different role, right? I sure. Timothy Lilligren's role in all this, because you know what? In my little mini LFR that I uploaded, I, I got a text from someone, an analyst, who was like, I disagree cool. with what you with you being disappointed in Lilligren's play. Because I said Sandin and Lilligren I wanted to be better. And he said, David Amber, I'm gonna fight you. He's just, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a thing you say to David Amber, actually. That's why it's, I said it. It's not, yeah. Yeah. Um, then he just kicked me in the neck and it was over. Um, so, Lilligren is not... We need to adjust our expectations. He's not Eric Carlson light, <laughs> which is what he was billed as. He's quietly just making solid, smart, defensive plays. The kind of plays a coach can defend on. And his job is by the end of this preseason, we need to be asking, is he going to make it over Dermot? Because I think it's potentially realistic and potentially what's best for the team. What are What is your top six defensemen right now? Like, what is your lineup? If you're making, if you're Keith, you're making the lineup for opening night, what are you, what are you setting it as? Well, no changes to the top four. Which is? Uh, Riley Brody, Muzzin Hall, and then... Uh, so who, who who do we got? We got, we got Dermot. Mm -hmm. We got Sandine. Sandine and Lilligren. Um, I'm not gonna lie. What's wrong with Sandine Lilligren? I don't. I I was gonna ask you the same. That was actually a part of my lineup of questions. You also got Justin Hall. Oh no, you threw in Hall. Yeah, I threw in. Yeah, Hall. yeah. Okay, okay. I threw okay, in Hall. I, I have a couple <laughs> uh, announcements. Some breaking news. Oh, oh. Number one and most important. The Chris Johnson Show is officially on Spotify! Hey! Hey! We can That's delete hilarious. the whole first half of this yeah. episode. <laughs> Where is it, Jesse? Um, number two, tweet Jesse anyway, by the way. Oh, please no. do not. Please tell him where you can't find it. It's like, Jesse, I checked under my uh, I checked under my dresser and I can't find the Chris Johnson Show. Can you tell me when it will be there? How would somebody um, with an Android phone tweet? <laughs> would, they, would they tweet like super Potato, power? potato, potato! Uh, sorry, I... I <laughs> what? <laughs> That's from someone who's been watching the Wiggles. Uh, yeah. Potato, uh, potato, potato. Uh, <laughs> other news. Darren Drager. Oh. Breaking news. We have a free agent signing to announce. No. Oh. Chris Johnston is joining TSN. Oh. Oh. As a hockey insider. Starting okay. today, you're going to hear Chris Johnston on the insider trading uh, on Sports uh, Sports Center and on that hockey. Wow. He's fired. <laughs> He's fired. The Chris Johnson <laughs> show had a great run. He's fired. No bell guys on this network. You're fired too. <laughs> oh, good for him. Anyway, just thought I'd throw that out there. Ah. That, that just, that, yeah. So now you, now you gotta make the trek to Scarborough there, CJ. Oh, yeah, that's not fun. Hey! Agent Corp. Hey! What? It's, it's not fun. It, it's it's not. very fun. Nah. <laughs> That's why Steve rolls in here every day going, can you believe traffic? And we're like, I didn't say that today. You didn't say I that left today. lots of time. Sure. Two things Steve will is almost guaranteed to talk about every time. We have to add it to a Steve bingo card. Can you believe traffic? Can you believe blank traffic? And then second one is, what's the parking situation? Have we talked about that on the show yet? No, we haven't. Okay, so, so I live in a neighborhood outside of Toronto. It's in Toronto. It's in Toronto, but it's not downtown anymore, but it's about five minutes away from downtown. As an outsider, this is deep into Toronto. For me. Okay, this is... Okay. Yeah, it's, this it's, is it's Toronto. Like, yeah. 
Okay. You're also a 10 minute drive from the downtown core. Yeah, like I could be yeah. I could or be, 45 minutes. Adam, you're yeah. downtown. Okay, okay, yeah. downtown. I could be at, at, at the uh, at the arena at Scotiabank mm-hmm. in 10 minutes. To me, you're not down. Like I live on uh, West Queen West. You right. know, you're not downtown. You're kind of you're in the suburbs of downtown. Yeah. But to anybody who's not central downtown, you're downtown. Right. It's okay. Fair enough. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. So I'm the I'm Trontonians the suburbans are part. very gatekeepy about. Yeah. Oh, I know. That's <laughs> oh, you cross the Don Valley. You, oh, yeah, you're not at downtown. Oh, anymore. you're you're like in some other neighborhood. Nice. Yeah. Amazing. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> I could actually walk here. It's, it's wild. Well, There's a beach nearby. Um, you could walk anywhere if you're determined. But you sure can. <laughs> except for parts of Toronto. Um, and I will say this. Uh, uh, why are we talking about this? Oh, yeah. Steve. <laughs> So there's finally <laughs> one of the things that was an issue with the first place we recorded is like Steve used to take the go train down or whatever, and there's no place to park, right? It's downtown. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now we're I live in a neighborhood where the parking is free. Mm-hmm. I'm in downtown Toronto. Parking is free during the day here. You have mm-hmm. to have a pass to park overnight, but parking is free in the daytime here. And there's always plenty. And it's, it's well but <laughs> but what does Steve use our group text about work for? It's about everything, but it's about yeah. the around uh, half an hour before we're about to record. Um, we get a text from Steve every Tuesday and Thursday that says, uh, "So, what's the parking situation looking like?" And I always get a really <laughs> helpful text. It's, it's great. It's great when you ask the people at the location you're asking about, and they don't help. It's always because... great. It's always great when you're just trying to get to there on time, which helps all of us. And they're just little assholes about it. And they're like, I don't know, Steve, figure it out for yourself, stupid. Because the answer is always the same. No, there's a couple spots on the street. Well, and the thing is, is that between the time it takes for him to get here, the situation's going to change. Right. Like, that's talking, why I don't it. ask half an hour out. I ask five minutes out, and I need it'll a fucking stop. answer. But we you don't give me one. I'm not going to go stand in the spot and protect it for you. Poke your head out the window. Poke your... Now here's the same. Jesse, we don't have you are pylons. seven foot, eight foot, thirty. Stick your head out the window. I am not a giraffe. That is offensive to tall people. Hey, <laughs> there's a Wiggle song about that too. Why can't you just help a pal? Because I'm not running down the street with my pylons and, re- and reserving Steve Dangle a spot on this Maybe street. Maybe you should. Maybe you should. Steve needs a spot, hey. everyone. Get the valet. If you go to Sportsnet, do you... Two of these letters are mine. <laughs> <laughs> you and Adam pick whichever of the other two. Two of those. I don't know. Steve, what about the... We are the and podcast. No, I want, the, I want the lines. I want to be line three. Uh, like, uh, there's three... <laughs> I know there's the four space. of them. That's yeah, cheating. I want line three. You be the oh, lines. I'll be the space between the lines. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah. Adam can be the space in between the lines. <laughs> That's too much space. <laughs> no, Steve needs it to put his car. <laughs> that would be great. Anyway. Steve, right between lines two and three, and I'd say, that's very helpful, friend. <laughs> Which is not something I've ever said to either of you two clowns. If you just drive down the street, you'll find a spot every time. I don't know what you don't get about that. It's not every time. <laughs> I can't wait till it's so, snowing. No, no, tell them about the green Sometimes pee. he has to go all the way up to the top of the street and park for three bucks. <laughs> First of all, it's five bucks. Second of all, I'm just trying to get here faster. And then I get in the door and they're like, you're late. <laughs> yeah, be on time. You're two minutes late. <laughs> I was trying to, and you didn't help. <laughs> this is great. So I started to leave earlier because I'm like, well, I'm on my own. <laughs> my friends aren't going to help. Adam won't stick the head out of his own goddamn door and help his friend. I'm going to die. Yes, Steve, there is parking. No, Steve, there is no parking. <laughs> slam. You slam it. Slam the door. No, instead what happens, I get to your front door and hand you your packages because you haven't <laughs> opened the door. Adam, pick up your packages. Why are I, they sitting on the front You won't even open porch? the door to help yourself, let alone me. <laughs> why do you all, why do you, every time we come here, there's 18 well, Amazon yeah, packages. I'm going to porch pirate you. Teach you a lesson. Pick up your packages. Tell me where the parking is, asshole. <laughs> so the reason for that is that Stop I'm ordering so much shit. Well, I, ah, I got your girlfriend's socks. <laughs> and she'll never see them. <laughs> and I run away. <laughs> <laughs> the reason for that is 
we're building a house here and all of the stuff that I don't have not any, literally I, yeah no no not literally but like you know like you need like so so I didn't have like anything I rented an apartment after the divorce what had furniture in it so I didn't own anything a Ferrari and car I, yeah a Ferrari I literally was Ferrari car and 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 so I uh uh um, we, I have to, or I had to order things. I had to get a new toaster. I had to, like things you don't think about. I had to buy Lysol. Like, you know what I mean? Man. When so, did, when did you move in? Here? Yeah. March. But I don't like, I'm buying. No, 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 no. Don't gloss over that March. fact. That is how many months later? That's when the brick wall disappeared, right? Cause I moved in here. Adam, you know what you had the whole time? <laughs> Parking! <laughs> <laughs> I love you, man. This is so much. Shut fun. up. <laughs> so much. Shut up. <laughs> Hey, um, Get a damn toast. Okay, so uh, we know all the uh, Key Leaf members of the team went to Devaris's cottage this year and had a chat. Like, Wayne Sim was there, Austin, mm -hmm. Mitch, everybody. Mm. Um, they said they kept it real. Now, that came from Tavares, so that's why it sounds a little bit weird, like me <laughs> saying it, because I'm sure it was weird him saying it. But it seems like they had a chat about what happened last year. Okay. And I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I do want to say, does that as a Leaf fan, because we're talking, take the analyst head off, put the Leaf fan hat on. Does it make you feel better to know that they did that? Yes. Um, how do I not give away our five episodes about the documentary? Okay. Uh, you will come away from this documentary going, yes, they needed that very much. Um, listen, all due respect to the Montreal Canadiens. There's no reason, no reason at all that they should have lost that series. None. Mm -hmm. None. They were up 3-1. I don't care if Montreal... Let's say Montreal was a better team. Okay. All right? Definitely. You lost three straight games. Last place team in the league could play the first place team in the league. First place team in the league is going to be in tough to win three straight games. It's the NHL. Mm -hmm. And I don't think the chasm between the Montreal Canadiens and the Toronto Maple Leafs was first to last. No, it wasn't. They're tight, and they lost three straight games. It's hard, genuinely hard, to win and therefore lose three straight playoff games. They won 5-1, 2-1, 4-0. <laughs> Two of those games, the Leafs were just not in it. Yeah. And the first period of game five was a as, as bag of shit of a period as the Leafs have had over the past decade. In game six, they played two periods. They were up for the third and overtime, and that's it. Like, yeah, Montreal caved them in. Jack Campbell yep. stood on his skull and brain. and uh, That, by the way, got him five plus million. That period should have got him five plus million. Should have. Will get him should've. five million. And then uh, game seven, they just decided, they well, let's be consistent and be shit the whole time. And, um, like, there's just... There was such a lack of answers. And listen, they've brought in this player. They've gotten rid of that player. They've brought in this player. They've gotten rid of that player. They got rid of the coach. They changed this about the power play. Now they're changing something else about the power play. The answer is in the room. The answer's in the room. It's 100% in the room. Um... That's why they needed that meeting. I'm glad they know. Like I'm. Oh, they know. Yeah, they, that that gives me some solace that they know what a big mess it was, mm -hmm. and it still is because they can't make up for it until the playoffs. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that they realized that. And it's funny that Tavares held this kind of cottage getaway because he should be. He's if he was there, this probably doesn't happen. You know, if Muzzin yeah, isn't probably. injured, this probably doesn't happen. Yeah, we could have said that so, against Felino, Columbus, too. Right. <laughs> if Felino's playing if, at 100%. If, 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 if. Right. If. Still got to get it done. Right. Doesn't matter. You're going to lose people in the playoffs. If. You got to. You got to. And, and if, if you say, oh, well, you know, they lost uh, Tavares. Well, they lost. They didn't lose him the, the, against Columbus. I know they lost Muzzin against Columbus, but all the big four were still in the lineup. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? So this is the thing. So I'm, I'm glad that they did that. Yeah. The so whole they, thing was not to make you mad. <laughs> it was to make you hopeful, actually. Because the, the, I am trying, by the way, to be hopeful about this season. 
That's my actual mission right now is to be like, you know what? I'm going to take all the positives and I'm going to eat some positive pie. See how that goes. Well, uh, oh, here. Can, can I can I say a positive? Please. After the first preseason game, um, uh, Adam Lascaris uh, t- tweeted out um, a very positive thing. Um, the Leafs improved to 11-6-1 against Montreal in 2021. Shut up. Adam. <laughs> He's funny. I Low key. You, you ever see something that makes you laugh and want to die? <laughs> I, <laughs> they won 11 out of 17 games and lost 18. Whatever. Like, oh. Four of those seven losses, because I include the overtime loss as a loss. And three of them are in a row. Four of those seven. And in fact, of the of the regulation losses, four of those were. Anyway. Um, it's the last dance season. It's going to be. This is probably this is the most hyped I've been for a Leaf season. Like, it's like, the most on the line now. Yeah. Going yeah. into it, it. it I don't have the like defeatist attitude of oh this team I hate them I'm in the oh my god everything is on the line for these guys let's let's and, go and, and you know when people say oh it's early it doesn't matter that no longer applies here right. no. every game yeah. baby is gonna matter they they buckle in those situations that's their reputation is they buckle now they have an entire season mm-hmm. of that good good get used to it. Every game is going to be interesting because I'm going to be looking for something that uh, everybody's about to learn come Friday. But oh. It's called Stanley Cup Habits. I can't wait till we all be in on that. I'm going to I'm going to be every single game. I'm just going to be watching for Keith and if he believes that Stanley Cup Habits are happening. Mm-hmm. I, it's, it's going to be the best season. Like I'm really pumped for it. I'm withholding so much. Yeah. I, I really <laughs> cannot wait for you all to watch this documentary like we did and watch our five episodes about it because we... Holy not shit. Not holding back. That was some deep water. <laughs> yeah. That was some deep water. Um, I, it's not all depressing. Oh! It's this time in the show again. So excited to talk to you about this. Ladies and gentlemen, have you have you heard about the Lawnmower 4.0? Do you know about it? Have you never have you never heard us talk about Manscaped? About having a clean down there area and how important it is? We want you to be spaceship ready. That's right. We want you to be tournament ready if you're a swimmer because you're not allowed to have hair on your body. And that's why you should sign up with Manscaped. And by sign up, I mean just go to the website and use the promo code DANGLE. Why? Because obviously. Now, here's the thing. Um, inside the package that you're going to buy for your package, you're going to find the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer. You're going to find the Weed Whacker ear and nose hair trimmer because we want to get rid of those little willows that uh, are going to grow out of those spots. You also get the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant. Want to smell good, right? Who doesn't? You also get a toner. Got to have them shiny. And performance boxer briefs to pack them in, as well as a travel kit, too, so you can bring it on the road with you. Say you travel, you might need it. Now, again, Lawnmower 4.0 has got some incredible technology in there. Let's just say this. Accidents are not welcome. And their technology actually kind of helps you be accident-free, along with the fact that it's got um, an LED light that's 4,000K, just so you can have a precise look at what's happening while it's happening. Do you see what I'm saying? So get 20% off and free shipping with the code DANGLE at manscaped.com. Why? Because we could. 20% off and free shipping with the code DANGLE at manscaped.com. Listen, we know that this is your favorite commercial, and that's why we want to remind you one more time. It's 20% off. Using the promo code DANGLE at manscaped.com. Your space balls will thank you. It's that time of year again where you start to get into your office pools and you start to kind of talk about like, okay, what what prizing are we going to do? What are the rules going to be? Can we suggest officepools.com? Officepools.com was launched in 1995 as the first website that allowed people to manage a hockey pool online instead of waiting for the scores to be posted on a bulletin board or their fridge the next day. Remember people used to do that? Isn't that crazy? Now they serve hundreds of thousands of users, and they are the premier fantasy hockey site in Canada. Whether you want to create a uh, a box pool, kind of easy to set up, great for fundraising, or you know if you have a lot of participants, an open pool or a draft pool, office pools is the perfect place for your hockey pool needs. And here's the great part. There's an athletic hockey pool. It's powered by officepools.com, and they're giving you a chance to participate in their pool. So here's some of the prizing you can get by joining the athletic office pool. By joining... You're automatically entered to win a PS5 or an Xbox Series X. You get to choose which one you want. First, second, and third place get signed jerseys. Third place, you get a Tavares jersey. 
Second place, Patrick Kane signed jersey. First place, Sidney Crosby. And we'll have the exact details on all the prizing next week. But seriously, how cool is that? There's going to be monthly winners. And and you can enter a team of people so you can work with your friends together on this. There is so much happening. And all you need to do is go to officepools.com. Sign up and join the athletic hockey pool and make your picks for the chance to win some fantastic prizes. Officepools.com. Fantasy sports your way. Jesse, can we bring up the peng- Penguins audio? Let me know when you're ready to go. Now, Jesse, or Steve, you're not allowed to look at this. You have to look away from Jesse's screen. And I do need you to, Jesse, at some point get that film that prevents uh, people from being looky-loos. Because, you know, wow. our boy Steven, he's being a looky-loo right I'm Sitting now. next to you on a plane. So it's a seven-minute clip. Oh, okay. Oh. It's, do you know That's, what part of it we're playing? I don't. But you know what? I'll pull. <laughs> I thought, when I looked at the clip, I thought it was a minute something. But that might be the Kadri clip, which we're going to get to later. Yeah, so yeah. Here's what I'll read. Here's what, oh, no, no. It's not that clip. I'm not, I'm not looking for the seven-minute clip. If you scroll down, there's a Twitter one. Right from Pittsburgh. Yes. So that's the seven minutes and 23 Never mind seconds. Okay. So Coach Sullivan. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, yes. I'm just going to say this. All right. Coach Mike Sullivan, coaching former Toronto Maple Leaf Kasperi Kapanen. Oh, uh, yeah. What do you think Mike Sullivan would say about Kasperi Kapanen? Uh, he had a pretty good season last year, didn't yeah. he? Um, yeah. He's a very gifted player. He's an extremely talented player. He's got some pretty good defensive instincts. He's got some good offensive instincts. He's one of the fastest players in the league. I think Coach Mike Sullivan summed all of that up and probably more. And as a Leaf fan, you're going to recognize this immediately. Oh, no. He knows what Kasperi Kapanen is and what he can be. He's capable of being a star. And here's what he said. I told him he has the potential to be an elite player in this league. I'm going to do everything within my power to help get him there. Sometimes that means tough love, but it's not because we don't think highly of him. Just the opposite. Is that not Kasperi Kapanen's entire career in a nutshell? Has the potential to be elite for whatever reason, and I don't know what they all are because it's multiple reasons, has not got there yet. Has the elite skill, has not got there. Uh, One interesting thing that was said on the TSN broadcast for the Leafs' second preseason game about the... I, you're, no, I can't. The I'll CJ turn to ne- dust if the I say CJ it. Network. Yeah, the network that CJ works for. Um, is Sometimes they wonder if Ilya Mikheyev needs to slow down in certain situations. Huh. Because he's going too damn fast, right? Like, how are you supposed to stick handle going at that speed? Very few players can do it. There's a reason why we look at Connor McDavid like a god. Because right. no one else can do that. Mikheyev can go the same speed, but he can't do nearly the same things with the puck. And I wondered that about Kapanen at times, because what does he do? Full speed into the corner. Like, he's going to beat you there, and then stop and look for help. You know what I mean? Like, with him, all the raw tools are there. The raw tools of a superstar are there. Um, but in his head, the decision-making is its not there. Sidney Cross. There are players in the NHL who can do the things Sidney Crosby does, but he's brilliant. He's a surgeon of the game. And he does it during the game. That's that's one thing I think that gets overlooked a lot in hockey and in all sports is you're not just dealing with the most, like the, the stars. You're not just dealing with the most athletically gifted. You're dealing with the most brilliant players in the sport mm-hmm. that you get it on a different level it's like what they said about Wayne Gretzky he knew where everybody was at all the times yes he he was brilliant and that's an example of a guy who wasn't maybe the most athletically gifted he had wicked endurance mm-hmm. um but was he the fastest not really no he was just the smartest hardest shot not really smartest smartest and- uh, they say that in racing they talk about um Lewis Hamilton who just won his hundredth race hey don't spoil it oh sorry I haven't seen uh, the next season. It hasn't been no, no. edited yet. You yeah. big idiot. <laughs> um, uh, and, you know, they used to say about him, like, so he had a teammate named N- Nico Rosberg, and they were both at Mercedes together. And they were actually both karting partners together when they were kids. So it was kind of cool that they ended up on the same F1 team. And they said Nico Rosberg was all about, well, what's the physics of this? And what's the math? And what's the thing? And they'd say with, with Lewis Hamilton, yeah, he was in all that. But he would just tune the car and then mentally figure out how best to handle it while in it and what i took from that was it wasn't like like nico rosberg had to and he won a nico rosberg won a championship so this is not a slouch of a driver right but lewis hamilton's won like seven or eight and the the difference is that 
he can do it during all the time. He's 36 years old, and he's still the top guy. He's still leading in points he's right 36? now. He's 36? He's 36. He looks 25. I know, I know. Like, <laughs> God Jeez. loves some more than Jesus. others, okay? Yeah, let's be clear on that. <laughs> like, what? And, and I know, I know, I know. That's and, shocking. And so, you know, and, and I think in this particular case with Kapanen, if you can manage some of the, what are they, in baseball they call it the yips, mm-hmm. where they go, oh. <laughs> or like what Jake Gardner had in Toronto, just the, like, uh, oh. you know, where it's like, I'm going to, I don't know why, why I can't throw to first base, but I can't. So I just won't. You know, if you can, ha- if you can handle why Travis Dermott does a spin rama in an overtime game against Montreal. <laughs> That's that's the challenge with coaching, and Kasperi Kapanen has elite skill. Mm-hmm. This guy is so damn good, playoff performer. Like, like yes, he he Indeed. has that attitude. Oh. And the the thing, Penguins fans, I don't I don't know how much of this he did, but I when the Leafs lost Kadri and Kapanen was still around, I was like, okay, the role of team asshole is vacant. Be the be the team asshole. And then there was a game, ironically, against the Penguins where he fought Jared McCann. And I'm like, that's not the target I would have picked. But <laughs> go ahead. go. That, yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Be the team. Like, you can tell he's a mouthpiece and he loves all that. Kills penalties. He can play on the power play. Like, uh, it's all there. It's all there. Mm-hmm. And you just, I mean, if there's anyone who you could learn from, it's ideally the most brilliant player in the game. And that's Sidney Crosby. Yeah. He... I don't know if he's still the best. He's definitely still the smartest. Mm -hmm. Tom Dundon says there's no grand plan. There was no grand plan or revenge plan. With Kasperi Kopp... Or sorry, uh, with Kasperi Kopp... Yes, Barry, Kopp and Yemi. This is the weirdest thing ever. That the Hurricanes are still... Listen, despite all the evidence... Yeah, I know he's getting asked about... like No, but Tom Dundon doesn't need to do interviews. Well, that's but like, he's doing one. Oh, right. Tom Why? Dundon, no. But Tom Dundon needs to do interviews. The, he doesn't. Sell the hurricane. He doesn't, <laughs> but he does. He does. Sell me on this. Right. Sell me on this. Tell me. Yes. We did it for revenge, and also we like the player. I'd love to have Tom on the show. I'd love to know what was going on. This well, time. I wouldn't. He's not going to give us anything good, apparently. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> what <wow>. do you mean? <laughs> he's a liar. I mean, he's not a liar. Right. That's P- well, maybe it's lying. I, I, Maybe it is. Yeah, for PR sakes. Nobody gets hurt. But here's the thing. Like, you know, Sebastian Ajo, the context on this, if you don't know, is Montreal offer sheeted Sebastian Ajo last year. But his jersey number in the offer. And then, and then of course, that's what that's what Tom Dundon and Don Waddell did. Yeah. Yes. And then he's they, like, it had nothing to do with that. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> sell, th- sell this, man. This is entertainment. It's not WWE. But that's part of it. It's fun to get the owners into it. I like that. Yes. Own it. Yes. You're like, hell yeah, it was revenge and we won. Like, do that. That's great. There's an answer. I want to be... I'm already excited for the first time the Habs play the Hurricanes. Oh, I hope it's in Montreal. Give me some more. Give me some more. It'd be... Okay, you can play this game, but maybe like a day or two, you know, before they come to town. Yeah, I did it for revenge and I'd do it again. Love that. Give me a little bit of that. Jeez, give me some sizzle. Sell it. You're the Hurricanes. Oh, a bunch of jerks. Except for, well, well no, no, no. No, I would never. Except for when we... I would right. never. Except for when we might actually... It's very be. odd. It is odd. It's an odd answer. It's the. It's so weird and, that they're dug in saying they didn't do this thing. They obviously did. <laughs> <laughs> do you... Now, I wonder, honestly, if they thought, well, I think the world would just accept that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm waiting for Tampa to be like, we didn't win the cup. Yeah. Oh no. I, I waited. Yes, for Tampa. you did. I, I would love for Tampa to be like, we took advantage of the rules with Kucherov. The rules are the rules. We we took advantage. That's something. That, I don't know. It's it's not the spirit of the rules, but those are the rules. If Tom Dunnan was playing coy, like you could even deny it while being an asshole. Like be an asshole about it. Like like Lou does it. Lou Lamorello does it. I wouldn't say I wouldn't call Lou an asshole, but Lou does moves. You're like holy shit, and he looks at you with a straight face, like yes, and. That's entertaining. And that's the shtick. Yes. Yes. It's funny. It's funny. And like, he does all these things that are, you're like, I did, is that allowed? Is that even legal? And he does it with a straight face and then his teams are good. It's great. What a great bit. But like, I don't know, for the Hurricanes to, uh, we're very, 
very fun. Oh, no, but we weren't trying to have fun. In that, yes, you were. Yes, in, you were. Tell in us. that interview he gave, he also said he tried to call Jeff Molson, I believe, and then uh, Molson didn't pick up and he hasn't been able to. To say what? Ha ha? I don't know, but just what, talk about it. Apologize or what? what I don't. I don't know what the phone call. What would have happened on the phone call? But I believe the the it's in the athletics with uh, Pierre LeBron, correct? Okay, uh, that's not the one I have. Oh, that's not the one. You I dropped have. like twenty five million on an XFL team. You should have got like a sky oh. writer in Montreal to make a middle finger. I forgot like, about that. The XFL. Yes, guys, we're this is sports. Entertain me. Entertain us. Just say you did the thing you did. The uh, That's yeah, not even, like, listen up, yeah. to how boring that is. Say you did the thing you did. <laughs> I have it here with uh, Pierre Lebrun, The Athletic. Tom Dundon speaks with him. He says, I haven't talked to him. This is Jeff Molson. I'd be happy to, but I haven't talked to him about it. Uh, did he reach out to Molson? Yeah, I made a call, but I haven't talked to him, though. Oh man! I asked. I'm jacked you right now. I asked the Hurricanes owner. However, I, this is why I want to interview Tom Dundon. <laughs> Cut a problem. Why is he doing this interview in the Athletic? I asked Hurricanes owner. <laughs> however, if it at least helped to send a message to other teams about offer sheeting players. No, I mean it might be true that it happened, but it had nothing to do with the decision. But it was always strange to me that the Aho offer sheet happened in the first place. Right? Obviously, whatever the perception was about our organization or me when the first offer sheet happened was clearly inaccurate. And then he talks about losing Dougie Hamilton. He said, if we had to re-sign Dougie or 10 other things we tried to do, this doesn't come up. But uh, when you're sitting here with a bunch of cap space and you're not going to be able to use and uh, that you're not going to be able to use and looking at your choices, we went through many, many choices. This just happened to be one that ended up being executed. There was no grand plan. We didn't set out to do this two years ago, even a month before or even a month before. There's lots of options to look at based on the order things happened. When this came up, this one actually worked. We could do lots of columns on the hundred ideas that didn't work or we didn't get to execute. Okay. But you did this one right. and put the contract or his his jersey number in the contract and Which did an entire yeah. <laughs> you, you did it a whole social media campaign that was basically mooning and flipping off the Montreal Canadians, but you didn't do it for revenge. I went I went somewhere the other day. What did where'd you go? Where did where did I go? Do you do you remember? I, I was talking about it. Leafs media. And I was, Leafs what? Leafs media day. Media day. Hmm. That is what I called it, isn't it? It is. Isn't that what it's called? No. Oh, it used to be. And what? I didn't know this. What is it now? Leafs marketing day. Oh, that's what they call it. Check their YouTube page. I suppose oh, that's true. Boo. Says Leafs marketing day. I agree, boo. <laughs> but that's what it's for. Marketing! Market your team! You're the owner! We get to talk to you once every two years! Not Tom Dundon. Mm. Get him whatever you want. Get him. Oh. I don't under. Ugh. Okay. Be exciting! <laughs> for God's sake! A couple more things we need to get to. Mm -hmm. Did you see the story of the player that resigned, retired from hockey? To become a social media influencer. No, explain it to me. Nik uh, Nikita Papagayev. Papagayev announced at the end of his play. Papa career. New Guinea. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is the this is wild. He's a New Jersey Devils prospect. He's twenty two. Isn't he okay. like a second round pick or something? Yeah, he's pretty good. And here's the the quote is this. Are you ready? I want to hear it. What smells like, brother? Okay, so this has to be, like, Google Translate. Yeah, I think. Legendary day, new day. Guys, I received 100 messages from you. Where is the contract? Where is the team? Where are you going? I officially declare, I finished. Decided to try something what? new. I really, needed, I, I really need support. So, friends, if you can, leave comments, likes, and reposts. I will be very pleased. A new video will be released every day. The first video, legendary day. I am waiting for support, and today we are revving up the gas. And this is what he said on Instagram. So obviously that was in Russian. So I'm I'm just reading the direct translation. See, that makes more sense. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, they call him a striker in the article too, which is what I love because that's how Russians look. He. Uh, oh. He had. I mean, he had only nine points in uh, 78 games last year. Uh, 
uh, in CSKA, I believe. Yeah. Um, no, he managed to play for CSKA, Amor, uh, Dynamo, and Nef... Neftahemic. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, there are not enough vowels in that word, in that... Uh, <laughs> it's one of those where you're like, I don't know. I used to Russian. I was very gatekeepy about the KHL when I did highlights for them, and I used to love the North Americans give oh. it a shot. Uh Nail Yakupov signing with Neftekamik. <laughs> and I'm That's not how you say it! And everyone in the sports bar is like, okay, calm down. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I think it's But kinda, I know how to say it. Cool for him. Like here's the thing, man. Talk to anybody. I had a. I think I've told this story before, but I knew a guy who got who was drafted highly and was went to the OHL. He he went to one practice oh, yeah. with the Peterborough Peets, and when he got off the ice, he took off his skates and he's never worn ice skates again. Who is this? Uh, it's a friend of a friend. Oh, and I I'll tell you after the thing. Okay. because uh, he promised, please don't. He's like, please okay. don't name me. Okay. And so it, what he said, and I was like, I'm like, that is super interesting. Why is that? And he said it was because he had been in a hockey rink six or seven days a week since he was four years old. And he said, I was 16 and I was just done. I was just done. And I think you have to leave some room for that. As, as funny as this story is, it's a good chance this guy's like, you know what? I just don't enjoy it anymore. There... Uh, I'm trying to think of the guy's name. Was there, it wasn't it Andre Agassi who hated tennis all his life? He hated tennis. Yeah, his dad forced him to play tennis. It's a, Andre Agassi's uh, biography is a fascinating read. I'm gonna put that on my to yeah, read list. Download it. It's a, he hated tennis his entire career. On my to read list on my iPhone. Remember Stefan Legion? Yeah, yeah, I do. Team Canada second round pick, 37th overall, the Blue Jackets. And he qu- he was he, he was quit the, hockey when he was like nineteen. Team Canada, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He was yeah. the captain or something. Like he was a big deal. He was he was a big deal. He got injured heading into the gold medal game and and everything. But yeah, he quit when he was a teenager. He eventually returned. But yeah, guys burn out. So like I know it's it's a funny story. Like dude, he's quitting professional hockey to be an influencer. It is funny, but like maybe he just doesn't like it anymore. Um, happens. What? Okay, have either of you guys seen Ted Lasso? Yes, or at least Jesse? part of the way through the first season. No, so, I've never seen an episode. It's lovely. Do you want to? Not really. Okay. I think you really enjoy it, Jesse. Because I don't want to spoil it, but like, there's a character who I'm like, oh my God, he's living that character's life. Right. There's a character who's a professional athlete. Hates it. And is just like, I'm going to be an influencer now. Yeah, yeah. And honestly. <laughs> and, then, and then like two weeks after I see that, this guy actually does it. And, and you know what? He might be able to make the same amount of money. If this guy wasn't going to make the NHL, like think about it. If if you could make you could if you could make the same money and not have to physically sacrifice your body for twenty years. I I'm mean, like, he, this guy might be able to walk properly when he's forty. The, the travel. Oh, I mean, the the time away. Like I don't know. It might not be the worst idea. So I was I was trying to find um, his friend's YouTube channel. That's what I was looking up here because his friend Andre Repin probably not saying that correctly, Mm. has over 300,000 subscribers on YouTube. It's a good base. And um, Nikita was featured in one of his videos after retiring. Like he's in one of his prank videos. And I was like, okay, if you got a buddy who's got 300,000 YouTube subscribers and you're going to do your whole thing where you're collective and you're each making YouTube videos, that makes more sense than playing hockey. You know, Go and, do that as a career. I'm like, Nikita, you're making the right call here. He's also got like, um, uh, what's, what's it, what's it? capital venture capital mm-hmm. like he's he's got hockey money that he could use to fund projects right and make more money right you he's, know what i'm sold he's, he's twenty thousand followers on instagram he's verified he has his his video most recent video on his uh profile is him putting a snake around his neck in some sort of video i don't know it's in russian so i don't really know what's happening but like he has the funds to do this he has the connections he already knows somebody who's already successful at this this seems like a much more um, prosperous career than playing hockey. He, I believe, he puts a, a, a boa constrictor in a taxi with him. Yes, that's that's the prank video he's uh, he's working on. I'll put it on screen right here. I, mm. <laughs> so yeah, he's doing the snake prank video, and like, okay, I don't know where the actual YouTube video is, so I can't go see the uh, the numbers. But he puts in like a dog carrier, so the cab driver thinks it's a dog, and then it turns out to be a snake. And I was like, okay, that's gonna do well on YouTube. 
You know, I'm, that's the stuff that does well. I'm less on board <laughs> <laughs> his career than he was, than I was. But. Also, yeah, listen, you got to do what makes you happy. Right. And I think it's it's a funny story because it's such a bizarre headline, but at the same time, man, just be happy. It's short. The th- I think about being 22 years old and, oh, and, bag and of rocks. how, well, bag of rocks, but also like how short it is between 22 and 33, which is where yeah. I am right now. It's very short. Enjoy it's also it. forever. Like... I don't know. It doesn't feel like forever. I don't know. I give credit to a guy who's chasing his dreams. Yeah, that's, honestly. That's I mean, I'm what are we doing honestly. here? A, a lot of what people are, are... What are we doing in my basement right now? A lot does of... it make sense for you to drive down from Oshawa three times a week all season long? Well, now. Now it does. There was a time where it's where... like, I don't know, man. Why? Yeah, why are... <laughs> I got to work at HMV. I, I got to... <laughs> uh, yeah, I might miss my HMV shift to do the Steve Dangle podcast. At Christmas. Just oh man! Are we gonna squeeze in uh, a couple of things? Yeah, let's get Naz. So this is Nazem Kadri, some audio, and and we actually have this video, so you could. It's not eight minutes long. This is Nazem Kadri <laughs> talking about. Sorry for that. I'll cue it up next time. Um, this is Nazem Kadri. First time, about Adam. The hit that got him suspended. This time with Colorado in the playoffs last season. You remember that? Time. Yeah. It's a thing producer Drew and I bonded over. Mm. Uh, yeah, I mean, of course, uh, you know, the time of the game, nothing had happened before, you know, for it to get heated. I was just, uh, you know, trying to make a responsible defensive play and you know, a lot of things could have gone wrong if, uh, you know, he jumps by me and, and, and scores. So, you know, obviously it wasn't my intent to, to injure at all. I'm just trying to step up and, and, you know, prevent him from getting to the net. So, um, you know, it, it, it happened so quickly and, you know, thankfully he's all right and, you know, just looking, uh, looking to move on. Oh, of course. Yeah, it was, uh, it's definitely strenuous for sure and just time consuming. You know, we didn't really have a whole lot of time to work with, so we were just, we kept pressing for, for a response and an answer. And, you know, I think in the end, it, uh, you know, if you can't come to a conclusive answer, the, 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 the you know, the decision's going to stand. So you know, that's where we were at with that. You know, obviously, I, I strongly disagreed, but what are you going to do? That's him talking about the appeal, and now I think yeah. he's talking about his teammates. Not one bit. Not one bit. They uh, they understand who I am as a person and, and uh, what kind of character I have. So, you know, I'd, I'd like to think I have everyone's respect in that locker room, and, uh, you know, I'm sure they'd all say the same thing. They understand that you know, I'm a competitive guy, and I'm going to go out there and, and do, uh, do what I got to do, and I'm going to play hard, and I'm going to show up every night. So, um, you know, no, I, I don't think I did, no. The Avs logo is so good. It's so good, and it's too bad they're screwing it up. Apparently, according I heard from Mark, who's a huge Avs fan, been listening to our show forever. He said the thing that b- drives him the most crazy about the Avs jersey is that it. I don't think the blue on the lettering matches the pants. If I'm re- if I'm quoting Mark correctly, I don't think it. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. I think he was saying. I gotta look him up. What did he say? He said, uh, uh, um, second, as an Avs fan, I don't really hate that they added blue to the jersey or even the numbers. What I hate is the blue helmets are actually a different shade of blue than what's on the jerseys and pants. That's what it was. I'm just glad they uh, they don't do the red jersey thing with you know Colorado diagonally across the chest anymore, which was the oh I, that was those were bad too. Again, the I jersey, like those. The jersey's no. perfect. No. Leave it, oh. leave it, leave it, leave it. It's perfect. It's yes. perfect. Yes, very good. Um, what did you think of the Nas comments? Oh, <laughs> can I just say one thing? Go ahead. Is he is so extremely likable? Okay. You don't listen to Nazem Kadri and not like him. That's how I feel. Some people did. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Sorry. I'll shut up then. Well, because I, I well, producer Drew, <laughs> okay. who was a frustrated Colorado Avalanche fan, he didn't like that. Because it's, and, and I think a lot of people, especially if they read the quotes mm-hmm. oh, yeah. instead of watching, will think friggin' Nas. It's the third time he's been suspended in the first round of the playoffs. He's learned nothing. Third time in the last four years. He's learned nothing. And that's what I thought at first. And then I thought about it a little bit more. He, what's he going to do? Undo the suspension? Can't do that. He's going to talk his way out of... Uh, no, I wasn't suspended. He's going to Tom Dundon this? Can't no, I wasn't suspended last spring. <laughs> He's just going to... He could say... He could take the Tom Dutton route. That wasn't the plan. No. What, what's he going to do? Improve his reputation? 
What what's he gonna do? Is he gonna talk his way into getting less of a suspension next time? No. No. So just be your true authentic self, Nas. Nothing's at stake here. You're a free man. Say what you want. And he did. I kind of respect it. I do too. And, and I like, like I, I mean I I mean, listen, if he had done that and the Leafs had lost to Montreal, like imagine he was still a Leaf and that had happened. It oh. didn't happen, but imagine it happened. Bad. Bad. And like, listen, I believe him when he says he was just trying to make a defensive play. Sure. Because there was nothing in that game that led up to it. No. <laughs> there was. I believe him, but... It doesn't mean that they didn't make the right call. That's a lot of dirty hits. Like, a lot of dirty hits are a guy changes direction at the last minute, and you go, oh, shit, and you accidentally bean the guy, which is pretty much what happened here, if I remember correctly. Um, I don't know. What is he supposed to say? He can't... There's nothing he can do to undo what he did. He's glad the guy's all right. I don't know. Maybe that's a boring answer. Maybe I should be condemning him and say, you stupid idiot. Atone! Nas, atone! For getting suspended and costing your team! I just don't have it in me. Okay. Not in this case. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, hope it doesn't happen again. <laughs> like, what else do you say? We're all going to go with that. It might. All right. And then he's going to be a free agent at the end of this season. And sure sure would look nice in the blue and white, wouldn't he? My prediction is Montreal. No. Grew up a Habs fan. I wanted to be a Leaf again. Weirdly. Even after everything that happened. Could that not make you love the Leafs? Really love them again? Naz comes back. There's a redemption story. There's a redemption arc, that's, guys. That's sick. That's sick and twisted. Is it? Well, just the way he left. Oh. And for us to be like, yes, he's back. Which I think almost all of us would be. We would be. That's sick in the head. We're deranged. We're sick puppies. We're Leaf fans. Yeah. That's how it is. That's so... Yeah. Man. I would like a good old-fashioned redemption story. Yeah, I want, the guy who, Maple Leafs. I want the guy who missed like half of the playoff games he was eligible for. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> We're sick. We're sick puppies. We are. We are. I would, um, I would rather Kessel. Kessel that, would... You're, no, that, that's him sick. He's sick to want to return here. Kessel would have a better role on this team. I think Kessel is exactly where he wants to be. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> I think finally he has found a spot. Um, okay, and I think lastly, before we get into the press conference here, we do want to take a quick moment and say uh, thank you to everybody for your support since last Thursday. You know, just to run you through what happened over the course of the weekend, you know, we, we obviously have the big announcement. Everybody's super excited. And then that could have gone away. But it was like the wave that kept going, right? You took this show that we created out of thin air with a guy who understandably has built a, an amazing reputation and is an incredible performer. And then there's Chris. And then there's Chris, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was going to obviously say, you know, give him compliments to the both, but, but Steve's got it. I'm, uh, I'm kidding. I'm just, I'm just... But what I'm saying here, what I want to say is I found that a place to park. I, my opinion. I have to say we're just absolutely blown away by the support that the Chris Johnson show got this weekend. And, you know, normally we don't pay, we as a show don't really pay too much attention to the charts, but anytime you have a first episode, episode that a show literally 24 hours before did not exist, did not, ha was just an idea. And wasn't on Spotify. And wasn't on Spotify. <laughs> and it goes. It wasn't? <laughs> you think it would have been mentioned? Stop it. Okay. Goes, <laughs> as people are still tweeting about the Google thing, so I keep tweeting the Google podcast link. It's not on there. I'm going to fight them. It's, <laughs> I've never seen Jesse upset about anything. It's this up. This is the thing. It's up on Google. Uh, <laughs> Google it. Um, Damn Android so people. I, I. So here's how the weekend goes. We wake up Saturday morning. I get a text from somebody who shall remain nameless and anonymous. And they say, hey, just a heads up. The show you launched yesterday, number one in sports in Canada on Apple. That's amazing. The next day, um, I I get a notification from a different person. Hey, just so you know, the show that, that didn't exist 72 hours ago is now number one in Canada. And by the way, it beat out Dateline NBC. That's our number one podcast, really? I guess yeah. that was that particular day. <laughs> All categories. And you got to remember, too, in Canada, football is a big deal up here. And football podcasts right now explode. 
if you could be number one on a weekend in Canada right now in a sports category or in an overall category, you're probably football or crime and murder. Those are the two podcasts that do extremely well, right? Hockey does extremely well as well. I'm not taking away, but like the thing that I think that we're most proud of though is in the United States in hockey podcasts, number one on Apple over the weekend. Wow. And and I and I would say it probably would have been number one on Spotify, but it's not on there. Thanks. <laughs> but but beyond all of that, that is this community. You are the reason why this show happened. You are the reason why I believed, Steve believed, Jesse believed, and most importantly, Chris and Julian believed that this could happen and work. And we knew that you loved Chris. Uh, we knew that you loved him a lot, and we did too. But the support for that show, which is objectively a very good show as well, yes, it's, it's it not is. like it's not like you know you go to your, you support your friend's band and they and they suck. Like it's a great this great show, and it's only going to get better. It was it was good to have a show that didn't exist, and then they actually make it, and you're like, oh, it's good. Yeah, <laughs> it could have been bad. Yeah, it could have been. We don't know. And so I just wanted to say to you, thank you so much. Um, the network will continue to grow from here. There are other things. I know there's something on our website right now. We won't even say what. You can go to sdpn.ca. People are speculating about one of the slides that's up there under the show section. We're very excited about that. Jesse, you're very cheeky. And yeah, you are cheeky, you are cheeky boy there. for putting that no, up there, by I, the just, way. I added the thing. I was getting prepared. No, we didn't need to do that, but Jesse's being a cheeky boy. No, I boy. had to get prepared. Being a cheeky boy. Does it make the image? No, to cheeky boy. <laughs> so we just wanted to say thank you to you because really cool. And you have to understand, right? We started this podcast in my mom's basement eight years ago. We never thought that this was even possible. So uh, to have come even this far, mm -hmm. to have managed a pandemic, to have not been in the same studio for 18 months, to all of the things that have happened, this happened because of you. So we just want to take a moment and say thank you because without you, there literally is none of this. Nothing. 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 Let's do the press conference. Today's episode is sponsored by the NBA and their quest to advance the game of basketball, grow the community, and impact culture. The league celebrates its teams, players, and fans across the past, present, and future as a part of its 75th anniversary season. That's game highlights pivotal moments on court and beyond from iconic plays in arenas to the impact players have in the community. That is the NBA, and that's game. Now, for us, in, in Toronto especially, and in Canada, I think, on, on the whole, um, basketball for a lot of us started with Vince Carter and that all-star game dunk. That was really one of the most pivotal moments in Canadian basketball history. And I can remember being in my friend's room because his parents had a, a TV in their room. So I guess we were in my friend's parents' room watching that. And it was like a little 18-inch screen because they were watching TV downstairs and we didn't get the TV. They got the TV, so we had to watch upstairs. And watching Tracy McGrady passing the ball and he dropped these unbelievable dunks that we'd never seen before. It was a game-changing, life-changing sports moment. And I'm convinced today that because of that all-star game, the Raptors franchise is as successful as it is. There were some hard times in between then and now and a championship too. But Vince Carter changed the way Canadians look at basketball. And, and frankly, the NBA in Canada exists to me because of Vince. That's my pivotal moment. You should check out yours. This is more than just basketball. It's community. It's what connects us all and keeps us coming back for more. That's the NBA. It's their 75th season. That's game. You know, there's nothing more challenging, I think, in life than integrating your sleep with somebody else. One of the, it's one of the most challenging things, especially if you're a light sleeper. Now, for me, I am one of the deepest sleepers in, that I've ever met, personally. I, alarms don't wake me up. I could sleep on this desk right now. However, uh, learning to sleep with somebody else, like, for instance, my girlfriend, it's tricky. And that's why Helix makes things interesting. If you're in that sort of same situation where you are, you and your partner are completely in love with each other, but you can't really sleep well together because the mattress doesn't work, the settings don't work. Helix Sleep is for you. So Helix Sleep has a quiz. It takes two minutes, and you complete that, and it matches your body type and sleep preference for you. But here's the thing. It also matches for your partner. So it's made for you to sleep with your partner and for both of you to get the maximum amount of rest out of your sleep. And we know, especially with all the research coming out, how important that is. So if you need your mattress uh, cool, if you need it firm, if you need it soft, if you need it where it doesn't make doesn't move as much, there's so many different options and you can take advantage of all of them. HelixSleep.com is waiting for you. 
Go to helixsleep.com slash SDP. It will say, welcome SDP listener. Like you. It's talking to you. It's going to ask you to take a two-minute quiz, going to match you to your customized mattress, and it will give you the best sleep of your life. And they have a 10-year warranty, which, I mean, how long do you need a mattress for? 10 years. And you get to try it out for 100 nights for free. They will pick it up if you don't love it. But you'll love it. Helix Sleep even has financing options and flexible payment plans because a good night's sleep leads to a profitable and productive day. It also just makes you a nicer person to be around. I know for me, I'm no fun when I don't get any sleep. So Helix is offering also 200 bucks off all mattress orders and two free pillows for you. Helixsleep.com slash SDP. Again, it's helixsleep.com slash SDP. $200 off your mattress order and two free pillows, along with the mattress that's going to change the way you sleep. The Presser SDP. The Steve Dangle Press Conference. Thank you. Our listeners are the best. They are. This family that we've created is the best. And you can interact with this family oh, where? on our Discord. Hey. <laughs> so I'm going to check the numbers right now. Have we passed 6,000? Ah, we're 15 people, 15 users away from 6,000. And we will not end this show until we <laughs> pass 6,000. We're going to just keep going. We're going to keep going all night. Until uh, it's yeah. done. <laughs> until we get there. We achieve our objective. If you are not on our Discord, get on there. That's where we talk with everyone. That's where all of the fans of this network connect and just talk about really nothing all day long. If you're so, not on our Discord, fuck you. <laughs> wow. Okay. No. Oh, no. Sorry. No. That's, that's no. Not the, no. No. That's no. decidedly not no. the attitude that we want to have. Complete on our opposite. No. Yeah. In fact, it's, we. we yeah. I thought it was be... really hostile. No. 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 If you're on our Discord, we love you. Yeah. It's, oh. It's, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, I misunderstood. Yeah. Okay. That, that's what we're not going for. <laughs> By the way, there are so many. I, I want to say on Should our Discord right now. <laughs> Just one thing I want to highlight: if you were a fan of any of the teams that are playing tonight. We have game day watch alongs, yeah. much like what I did with F1 the other weekend, right? Like every day. So every day, our mods have it all set up. We got the Bruins and Rangers, Isles and Flyers, Sabres and Jackets, whatever. Whoever's playing on a particular night, you're going to be able to go on and log on and talk to people who are, who love your team and love the team that's playing you and talk about the game as it's happening. Plus, there are Discord servers for every NHL team, every NFL team, every NBA team, every baseball team. Um, the Chicago White, White Sox is still pretty slow. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, we have a couple uh, of baseball teams that people just don't just care don't about. Just don't care about. <laughs> I mean, is it Cubs or White Sox? I think we're going Cubs. Yeah. Um, and F1 and a bunch of other channels. UFC, I think, is in there too. Mm -hmm. So, like, listen, there's something for you here. Yes. Um, and it's an inclusive, fun environment, so we hope you check it out. I like the the Steve videos uh, part because it's a great way to organize. You ever go, Steve, you do too much damn stuff. <laughs> well, there's all my LFR stuff. Yep. There's all my TikTok stuff. There's all my Sportsnet stuff. There's all my stuff. Just neatly organized right in there. Right in there. Mm -hmm. Right. And there's a lot, a lot of talk right now about uh, Chris going to TSN. Nice. Yeah, a lot of talk right now. Is there now. Is there banter? It's all right all, all banter. <laughs> the uh, game day, day threads are very important. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, so cool. It would it would have got really chaotic if we only had channels for each team, and then people are trying to find out where to talk about the stuff. So shout out the mods for doing the greatest job ever, and they have a full like PDF of the entire NHL schedule. So the game day threads will just keep getting updated, and every time there's a game on, and you're watching, you want to chat and yell with somebody. There's going to be a thread for you to. Talk with the enemy or your uh, or your teammates on your same team that you're cheering for. Yeah, you have to be nice. nice. You see a fan of another team, you go, I don't cheer for them, and you do, and I disapprove. You make incorrect decisions. <laughs> hey, hey, you knocked that off. What's the press question? So we'll do one question today. Okay. It's from Hypnotoad. It got uh, eight Matthews heads and nine Steve head emotes. Whoa. Yeah. A lot of so a lot of people reaction to this. Um, starting today, I know what I said. Which current leaf will be on the team for the longest amount of time? <laughs> In other words, who will last the longest? That's easy. Austin oh, really? Matthews. I it's gonna be Austin it. Matthews. You ever have terrible thoughts? <laughs> you, I know you do. <laughs> you ever catastrophize? Is it David Kump? No, I just think I'm just thinking about how good the Arizona Coyotes are going to look in a few years with Austin Matthews 
Jack Eichel and Connor Bedard. <laughs> no. It's going to be amazing. Austin Matthews is going to be the Leaf. I think he's going to be a Leaf. I think he likes being a Leaf. I think he's going to be a Leaf the longest. And I would put Mitch Marner in there too. I think Mitch Marner is going to be a Leaf a long, long time. Despite what I tweeted in the spring when I was pretty, or was it the summer when I was pretty upset. Interesting. We threatened to name an episode Trade Marner for Eichel. No, we didn't. <laughs> we did. No, we didn't. I thought we actually did that no. because it was funny. We said we were going to name it that if they lost game six, I believe. Oh. And then we didn't end up doing we it. Were, that okay, well, we mean. were joking, though. It wasn't like a... I don't know if we were joking in the Well, moment. they did lose, and we didn't do it. <laughs> that sounds like right. not a thing I would mean seriously. Yeah, definitely right. Definitely not us. Anyways. Yikes. <laughs> I'm going to say... <laughs> John Tavares. He's because he's going to sign forever. Well, he also has signed forever. He, yeah, he but then after him. that, he's going to sign for more forever. Because remember, he's not worth the contract. Right? Oh no! Despite the fact that he's been a point of game player, defensively responsible, good leader, definitely not worth the eleven million. No, it's just he also just doesn't leave places where he's the captain. <laughs> it's not a thing he does. No, that's true. He, he would, would never. never. He would never do that. So I'm going to say him. Jesse, that's the only question. No, 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 we're asking. What's your answer? Oh, my answer. Um, Nick Robertson. Oy. That's not a bad. I'm gonna. Guess. I I think I'm gonna hack the system here. Well, not uh, Rasmus. No, 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 Robertson. Robertson is gonna be the longest uh, Leaf who's currently on the roster. He'll be here for the longest. Matthew Nyes. Price is right. <laughs> you can't do that. Why not? Who was drafted uh, in the third round this year? It was Matthew Nyes in the second round. I'm gonna who's, who's the third Mirov. round pick. They didn't have one. Ah, who's the fourth round pick? They didn't have one. Who's the fifth round pick? Ty Voigt. Who's the sixth round pick? V- Vyacheslav Peksa? Who's the seventh round pick? They didn't have one. Aha! Well, good job. Trick question. Nice. I knew that one. Peksa might have been seventh. I'm not sure. Okay. That was good. Well, listen. Uh, we got lots going on. Uh, I, like I said, look out for that uh, Amazon clip tonight. Um, this is going to be pretty spectacular. We're very excited about it. Oh, man. And, uh, and obviously, this is, uh, this is just the beginning of some pretty amazing things. Those episodes will drop Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And, of course, we'll keep to our regular podcast schedule, as will the Chris Johnson Show, now available on Spotify. But not on Google Podcasts yet, right, Jesse? Nope, it is, it is up there. Okay, Google all right. Podcasts. When will it be? Up Damn there. it. <laughs> it's there now. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You gotta, you gotta hit the post, someone. Uh, Steve, you go. I'm just gonna do this till no, it's stop. done. Stop! <laughs> stop! If there are audio troubles, it's because of that. My dogs are going nuts upstairs. Listen to that. <laughs> Someone's knocking on the door. I want you to start telling me if there's any parking. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle at Adam W Y L D E and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.